Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a joint town board work session and town board uh, voting meeting. Uh, today's May 10, 2018. Would everyone please stand for the pledge? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. So, for our work session tonight, we have um, two presenters. One is Walter Artis, he's our MS4 coordinator. He will be presenting the annual report. And we also have John Lazzaroni, he's a senior engineer for uh, Morris Associates, our consulting engineers, um, to give us a discussion about water routes for a, p a project that we have coming up. Uh, we're gonna start with uh, Mr. Artis, how are you tonight? Very good, thank you. Thank you, and uh, you could uh, start your uh, presentation, please. Thank you. Um, I requested to be on this evening's agenda to inform the town board that uh, the 2017 Stormwater Management Program annual report is complete. It's for the reporting period March 10th, 2017 through March 9th, 2018. Um, it's generally consistent with last year's report. We're still operating under the 2015 MS4 permit. About a year, year and a half ago, the DEC did put up a new draft MS4 permit on their website <coughs> for public comment. Uh, due to the sheer volume of public comment they received, they've since pulled that off their website. And from uh, the best of my understanding, there is no date when that's gonna go back on for public comment. So right now and for the foreseeable future, we're still operating under the two, 2015 permit. Um, again, generally speaking, it was consistent with last year's report. We're obviously up in our percentage of septic pump outs in the East of Hudson watershed. Um, my understanding is a number of letters went out to residents that were deficient in that regard as well. Um, there were a couple items that did occur this reporting period that actually are a benefit to the town I'd like to briefly touch on. Um, back in 2010, we were required, as an East of Hudson municipality, required to prepare a five-year retrofit program. Uh, it was quite costly and uh, <laughs> It was, uh, actually we had an engineering report prepared back in 2009. It went through at least three sets of revisions with the DEC because- Speak up. Sure. Yep. It went through three sets of revisions with the DEC uh, due to the fact in Dutchess County, unlike Westchester and Putnam, um, there's not a lot of land to work with or public land per se. And really the only option we had was to rip wrap ditch line road along roadways. So uh, there were no standard calculations for that, so it went back and forth with DEC to come up with some standard calculations. Uh, they came up with a number for us. Um, we have an East of Hudson subcommittee. Um, initially, there was a village in, uh, village in town of Pauling, uh, town of East Fishkill, town of Beekman, and the Dutchess County Department of Public Works. The village in town of Pauling decided to go down to the Lower Hudson Coalition, Watershed Coalition, with 26, 28 municipalities. Uh, we decided to stay East Fishkill, Beekman, and Dutchess County Department of Public Works. At that point in time, we were told we needed to have 7.3 milligrams, or kilograms of phosphorus for, of reduction. At the end of the day, at the five-year program, we came up with 6.5, so we were eight-tenths short. Uh, speaking with the liaison between DEP and DEC, Mr. Robert Bukowski, who's up at the central office in Albany, he was fine with that, he's close enough. There was a grace period in 2016. They kind of put the program on hold. We're gonna restart it in 2017. I finally got a meeting with him, I think it was January of this year, and we had some good news. He reduced that 7.3 to 4.7, which gave us a plus 1.8. And then they decided, as opposed to having us go through engineering reports and new calculations, for every 100 feet of stone riprap line ditches, we would get one kilogram of reduction of phosphorus. Nice and simple, nice and easy, no engineering reports. Um, a year or so ago, I, I kind of got appointed as the point man at Dutchess County Soil and Water for this East of Cuts and Subcommittee. And um, I asked at that point in time, thinking there would be engineering reports, if they could allocate some funds out of money that actually every town and 
Dutchess County contributes for engineering reports, and they allocated $4,000, which we're not going to need that. It's just going to be some annual reports on my end. I do have a tentative meeting set up next week with uh, the commissioner, uh, Department of Public Works, and really just to keep track of all the riprap line swales they do, and we'll easily meet. I think we just need, over the next five years or four years, 2.9 kilograms of phosphorus reduction. So that's really good news. So, you know. And then the other thing I would just briefly like to mention, I, th I brought this to Supervisor D'Alessandro's attention a month or two ago. Uh, I came across a DEC program, a septic system replacement program, where they've allocated funding for 31 counties in New York State um, for replacing failing septic systems and they come up with alternative designs, working through the Department of Health and the municipality. Well, it turns out in Dutchess County, the two, uh, areas are Hillside Lake and Sylvan Lake, so there's no competition for the town of East Fishkill to get that $75,000 in funding. My understanding is it's being dealt with through the health department, and I believe Rick Witt may have done some preliminary discussions with them. Yeah, he did. So, good. And, but that's good news, and this is a five-year program. My assumption is there would be 75000 a year at least. So that's uh, you know kind of good news for the town, and maybe we can get some septics replaced and help out the residents as well. Um, that being said, uh, the only other thing I would like to add is I would request the board adopt a resolution authorizing the supervisor to endorse the and report so we can get into the DEC by June 1st. And I did note in the packet from the April meeting the resolution. Uh, there must have been a misunderstanding or miscommunication between Gina and myself and uh, because there were dates in there that constrained the supervisor from not signing the annual report until May 31st, which would make it impossible to get it into Albany by June 1st. So there was a revised, she sent me a revised, report. they do have okay, it, yes. Excellent. And that's pretty much it, unless anybody has any questions. So w with the East of Hudson, um, it's more stringent the, the, the laws because it's in the DEP watershed, correct. the New York City watershed? Correct, correct. And there were a number. We had to do the retrofit plan. We had to do the septic pump out ordinance uh, relative to construction activities. Any land disturbance over 5,000 square feet requires a SWIP. So, you know, there are enhanced requirements. And there was mapping that was required, and we did get a grant through. Uh, soil and water, and that's been completed. So, so what kind of mapping is that? It was just mapping of the, basically the ditch line, the, the catch basins, and you know the conveyance system within only within the watershed. Only in the watershed. And that was uh, conducted through a grant that uh, MS4 committee was able to obtain. So that that's complete as well. So right. We've met that in requirement. So besides that, we're in compliance with all other MS4 regulations. Yes, we are. Okay. Does the board have questions, concerns, comments? Right, as, as far as the, the magnesium that you mentioned, the levels, that's due to mainly during the salt, salt season, during the winter? The, the phosphorus? The phosphorus. Yeah. Well, that was a requirement. It, came, it was really DEP uh, pretty much working with DEC. Uh, put that out in the 2010 permit where they had these enhanced phosphorus requirements for any lands located within that East of Hudson watershed. Um, it also includes certain construction activities as well, um, not only just MS4 activities. So there was enhanced requirements like the septic pump out ordinance and the retrofit program and, you know. So their main concerns is like in the area where the watershed Their is. main concern is not having to do a filtration system for their reservoir system. Okay. In reality, that's the bottom line. Yeah. And the grant that you that you mentioned, seventy-five thousand dollars. That's for septics. That's for septic replacement. How yeah. is that supposed to be? Let's say we get that money. How how do we use that money? Well, again, it's, the details I'm not quite familiar with. Although I know it's handled being handled through the health department. Eligible residents would come forth, I'd say I have a failing septic system, I'm located in the Hillside Lake area or Sylvan Lake area. Um, I guess you would contact Rick Witt. Uh, in my, yeah, you know. and, then D, and then the Board of Health, I guess they have to make a joint application 
if they are <coughs> failing septic. I Correct. think there's criteria to meet. And they would uh, reimburse a portion, if not all, of the cost of replacing the septic system. And also look for alternative septic system. A lot of these lots, so to speak, may not have a lot of room to put in a standard conventional system. So right. there are alternative systems that can be. Yeah, there are, there are some advanced systems yes, where yes. the filtration. Yeah. Right, that years ago they did not allow. Right, they were right. Much so, so certain people close to the lake vicinity, whoever is closer to the, to the perimeter of the lake will be able to apply. Yes, that. if they have a filling septic system, I would urge them to, you know, come forward and just tr try to get the process moving. And, you know, okay. Because so there would be some, I can't tell, I don't know if there's going to be a 100% compensation, 50% compensation, but there's some Depends on the amount of people, depends on the amount of people that apply, right? I would presume. I, would right. presume. I guess in the situation, too. So is that, pi was it all only 75000 It was 75000 and it's a five-year program. So I would year. assume if we use it or, you know, we're proactive and, and, and jump on it, that they would continue or maybe even increase it. I don't know. Wow. Um, I don't think they would cut us out of it, but I, I just found it, you know, interesting that it, th the only two areas in Dutchess County that are eligible are both in the town of East Fishville. Those, so. are, the, those are the only two that right now we're aware of, but mm -hmm. as the program Those is are the only out. two the DEC has designated. Right. Yes. So. <laughs> Okay. Thing, if I could add to that, we reached out to the health department on that. And, yes. And they have trouble, they think, administering it. They don't have the manpower to administrate it. So we had offered if we could step in and administrate it. And we're still waiting, you know, some feedback on that. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, we might have to take control, of, you know, ourselves. And, but, but the money's there. So, you know. So we could already announce to the community that they could start Applying or uh, wait? I mean, I, maybe I think we need to do a little more. Yeah, uh, I would let Scott, you know, look into it more so he has actually a g good protocol in place, and so it's nice and smooth. All right. Deputy, no. anything? No. Thanks, Walter. Thanks, Walter. Appreciate You're welcome. that. Welcome. Okay. We'll be having a comment. Our our voting means right after this, and we'll pr have comments. But that'll go for next year's report. Is that correct? That's correct. Right, okay. uh, is it a is it a good idea if Walter sticks around, if in case anybody has any questions for you? Yes, I'll st I'll stick around. I appreciate it. Thank you, Walter. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Mr. Lazzaroni, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. The board each has a packet I put in front of you, Morris Associates, and on there is the letter from Mr. Lazzaroni and the routes, which are he'll be describing, and then a, um, a ranking comparison of them, and also then on the back end I attached all the all the. Um, notices I got from the uh, Dutchess County uh, Board of Health that explain uh, difficulties in the systems that we're trying to help. So um, maybe, maybe I could just start to kind of give a brief overview and then John can get into some details. That would be great. <clears throat> As the board knows, we've been uh, looking to make improvements at, at you know, various water systems within the town uh, recently. We've entered into a contract to purchase Whirly Homes and, and try to get their water straightened out. We have uh, problems at Revere Park, an existing water district that we've been trying to resolve for, for a number of years. And also at the same time, Fishco Plains, which is a system that we bought about five years ago, made some improvements to. Uh, there are still more improvements that need to be made to that system. We, we need to increase our, our water yield at that system. So for the past six months or more we've been looking at various options which John's going to elaborate on as you know how to bring uh, water it first started out Revere Park and Worley Homes that was our primary focus but in recent weeks uh, Fishkill Plains is is causing us some some issues and now we're trying to look at the picture more globally and try to come up with you know hopefully one solution to get water to all these systems so I'll let John go through the various routes that uh, we've been discussing 
Okay, thanks, Scott. Um, we have on our map a total of three options that we considered. Uh, option one is a connection through Vicki Lane and Tina Lane to Revere Park. And, and this connection consists of an eight inch water main transmission. Which and is it right goes. Here. Is that good? Can you see? Or the other one? And I'm just going to interject here. This, this became feasible within the last year or so because of the development of Hopewell Glen, which is right here. Without the Hopewell Glen development moving forward and getting to a point that they are now, th this would have not been a, a feasible connection, but they are at that point, so that's why it's an option now. All right, so you see on the map, um, uh, basically we connect from the, ex from the 12 inch uh, existing pipe within Hopo Glen, and we're proposing an eight inch water main transmission that would go to Lake Walton Road and Pressure Boulevard, connecting to the River, Revere Park water system. Again, the Revere Park water system is an, is an existing six inch unlooped main. So at that, lo that location, uh, we propose to put an eight inch pipe due to the limitations of the pipe size in Revere Park. Uh, another thing, I'll, I'll add another uh, piece of infrastructure that, that's coming along that wasn't available a few years ago was uh, the Cannon Well Field. Um, we've drilled test wells. We have a water supply permit for the Cannon Well Fields. Uh, that was really, you know, necessitated by the EPA project up on Ryan Drive. Uh, with that said, that project has, has commenced. We just recently awarded a interconnect from the Hamlet to Fishkill Road, which is another piece of the puzzle, which along with Hopewell Glen, you know, would allow option one as well as, well as other options. Right. So. Scott, pull that microphone a little closer. Okay. Thank you. So um, our option two is, is a connection through Route through 76 to Fishkill Plains. So in that particular option, we're proposing to connect from Hopewell Glen at the northern end uh, from an existing 12-inch line and then running a 10-inch water main to an existing 10-inch water line on Secor Lane. So again, uh, that proposal has a, a larger water size based upon the availability of the pipes on both sides. So we'd be connecting into a much larger 10-inch water main on Secor Lane under that option. And John, just so everyone knows the difference between a six inch and an eight inch and a- Yeah, it's, it's not just a small amount of piping that you're talking about. The, uh, an eight inch pipe probably has about twice the capacity that a six inch pipe can deliver. And a 10 inch pipe has about three times the capacity that a six inch pipe can deliver. So there's a much significant difference in, in terms of connecting into a six inch versus a 10 inch pipe. So it's much more benefit, much more capacity available for that. S so the, the first option, option one, ties in through the Vicky and Tina, and that's only six inch line. That's only six inch line, right? So okay. And that would only serve as go right directly to Worley Homes. But that would be for Revere Park and Worley Homes. Worley and Revere, okay. Right. So I know. And number two is a eight inch or 10 inch going? It's a 10 down? inch connection based 10 upon. 10 inch connection, okay. Connecting into a 10 inch, and that would connect through Fishgill Plains as opposed to Revere Park. And then the third option, uh, option three, is a connection through Route 82 and Crest Court to Worley Homes. And that, that involves an installation of an eight inch water main between uh, an eight inch water main uh, extension along Fishgill Road to Route 82 that would be provided by others. Then the eight inch connection would go along Route 82 and connect to Crest Court, which is part of Worley Homes. Again, uh, the Crest Court connection is also a six inch unlooped water main as well. So again, for that reason, we proposed an eight inch connection under that scenario. And in that scenario, we can't get to Fishkill Plains. Yes, just like the, the Revere Park, you're connecting into a smaller pipe. So you'd be, you'd be restricted to only Revere and Worley Homes in, in options one or three. Okay, but in options two and three, we both can help or assist commercial avenues in those 82 and 376. Yes, those are the larger commercial So we can commercial help areas. commercial businesses and other potential um, Here's the whole corridor along 376 right. that's, that has expressed interest in connecting to the water. Yeah, both have, and I guess it's, you know, which needs the most and who can we help the most. Um, number three is the most expensive. Well, we'll get to that. Yeah, go ahead. 
So that after that, what we did was we created a ranking system to, to rank all of these three options. Uh, th there's various uh, parameters that we looked at in terms of ranking them, and that was included in the letter. Uh, uh, the, f the first item we looked at was the construction cost, the total construction cost. So in that option, uh, option one has the lowest construction cost. So again, it had the highest rank in terms of it was the most beneficial having the lowest cost. We also had uh, items on ability to serve future area demand needs, ability to supply parcels along the route in the future, ability to provide fire flows, environmental issues, uh, DOT permits re being required and, re and the time frame for completion of the work. And we, we scored each of the options and based upon that, option two came out to be the, the, uh, the greatest benefit uh, of all the options involved. And again, that's because of this greater capacity, the ability to serve fire flows to a, a number of areas and the ability to serve future areas as, 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 desired, in the, as desired along the way. This option also gives you a multiple water source because you're connecting through Fishkill Plains, so now you'd have both the Hopewell Hamlet and Fishkill Plains water systems able to supply this combined area. So this is, the, this is the preferred option from a regional standpoint, and that's why it's our recommended option from a benefit basis, so. Do you have the, uh, the cost comparison uh, slide there? Yeah, I'm working on it. That's it. Okay, so as you could see, the three options and the costs. So option one is the cheapest, option three is the most expensive. So we were discussing, um, so option two, so the board understands, we have the problem areas is Fishgill Plains, Revere Park, and then, of course, and then we'll benefit also Brett View and Brett View too. Um, this is really the only route where we can help those other systems. It is, it's not the cheapest route, it's not the most expensive route, but it will help the most. We, if everyone remembers on the board, we dug a third well at the Fishgill Plains uh, water uh, area and it was deemed Guidi. Correct. And can you explain, Scott or John, what the Guidi is? I'll, I'll defer to John. It's groundwater under the influence of surface water. What it means is that, there, that the well is taking surface water in through the, through the well itself, and because of that, you have to provide additional treatment in order to use that well. Uh, it, the, usually we put in cartridge filtration units for treatment purposes, but again, it adds expense for treatment if you're, to, if you're gonna connect that well. And, and use that. So we knew that we had um, several years ago that we had uh, problems there and we set aside 350,000 for filters for, for Fishgill Plains. Uh, the, the problems were with the two wells that are currently there online, they're, they're shallow wells, they're both under 50 feet in depth and the Board of Health, correct me if I'm wrong, considers them now Guidi just because we had a third well dug and that was Guidi as well. Because of the third well and the results of the third well, they wanted to connect all three wells together. What we're currently doing is we're doing a monitoring, a daily monitoring of wells one and two and the burden is on us to demonstrate that they're not Guidi. Okay. But after the year long of evaluation, then a formal determination will be made by the Health Department. So when we set out to design the original filter system, we said we're not gonna just treat the one well, we're gonna design it to treat all three wells. Because even maybe they're not greedy today, maybe they become you know, greedy in the future. So by treating all three wells, it required uh, upsizing the electric service, replacing the generator, and that's really what ballooned the cost above the original budget. So we can utilize that 350000 to drive the cost of option two down, but we have to keep in mind that potentially after we do these long-term testing that we could still potentially need to put filters. Put and we'd filters have options in. at that point. The option would be to downsize the filter. And, and you know, at the time, we didn't have any alternate sources, so we were trying to build the filter system one time for future expansion. But knowing what we know now with the Cannon well fields coming online, and, and running a line to Fishkill Plains as a redundant along with the county connection, we would probably downsize those filters and just you know treat what we're able to get at, which be on the order of maybe 300 gallons 300 a minute gallons versus 500 a minute, right. gallons a minute. Right. 
So that would be an option. Another option would be just to supply it from the Cannon Well for an indeterminate amount of time until we wanted to make that investment. Until we, we do could. have enough water, enough storage here to actually supply all the fish kill plants. Okay, that's a great option. So if and we then have we the county as capital. a backup, and we have the <clears throat> county as a backup. So okay, well, let's not get uh, to that problem yet, which I, I want to discuss that. But so those are the two two problems with Fishkill Plains. There's more, but let me go to now Revere Park. What's the problems at Revere Park? Iron and manganese has been the historical problem, and yes. we now have a greedy problem there as well. Okay, so that will interconnect, and if we go the route two, that'll interconnect, and that will solve that problem. It'll solve the Revere Park problem. Yes. So what happens there? We take those wells offline, offline also? Right now we have two wells at Revere Park. One has so much iron and manganese we don't even use it. So we're just down really to one well. Oh. So in addition to iron and manganese issue, in addition to the greedy issue, we also have a redundancy issue. So we have, we have three issues going on at Revere Park. Our hope in the past had been to connect to Fishkill Plains. And it was a long process. First we had to buy Fishkill Plains. Then we had to put the filtration in. Then we had to get all the meters installed, which took a very long time to get people to let us into their homes to, to connect all this. Um, from there, we had to try to demonstrate to the health department we had enough excess capacity, which we had made that effort on, on a couple occasions. But another problem that's developing in Fishkill Plains is that e as each year goes by, our well capacity is decreasing. The, the, the screens within the wells are becoming you know, crusted. And, and diminishing the amount of water into the wells and, and diminishing our yield. And that's another subject that we need to discuss that we, that we are doing some monitoring right now for the next two weeks. We have sensors in the wells and trying to get a handle on exactly how critical that is because we may have to take some immediate action on that. Okay, so. A lot of moving parts. A lot of, lot of problems with Fishio Plains, and problems with Revere Park. This would help us with all those problems? All three. Um, and provide, you know, ex excess capacity unit for any kind of future expansion in that area. Okay, another uh, thought I had was we can help out certain commercial properties along that route. We basically have a waiting list for people that want to connect, yes, commercial properties. Okay, now, say uh, we go to them and they, they want to connect um, and that will all be possible. What about future connection? What about fire flow? Fire flow, uh, explain what, why the fire flow is so important for expansion of, of, of uh, economic development down that area. Well, you know, fire flow impacts in one year insurance rates, okay? And in some instances, it can affect whether or not you have to have a sprinkler building or not, okay? Uh, when the building was built across the street, we didn't have fire flow capacity to meet that demand, so they had a sprinkler the whole building. Um, since that time, we, we have a design on before the health department to, to make an improvement that uh, any future townhomes, like Hobo Glen's townhomes, won't have to have sprinklers. So, you know, it, it applies to any commercial development, multi-story development that you can go with just... Uh, a fire hydrant out in the street with enough capacity versus to having sprinklers. Okay, and, and so again, it affects your insurance rates. So potentially, because uh, you know, the councilman uh, Marinaro and I discussed several times that uh, there's been peaked interest down that corridor, um, Robinson Lane, and other areas. They were looking for projects to 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 develop, and this would potentially lower the cost for a developer to, to develop their project. And it could lower business cost as well, because all those businesses are operating, or the larger ones anyway, are operating private public water systems. So they have to have a treatment system in their facility. They have to have you know monitoring and operation reporting to the health department. So if they're able to connect to a municipal service line, they're able to basically eliminate that, free up some space, and not have to have an operator, not have to do the reports and, and all the sampling and that. So over time, they'll save money with that regard. Okay. Thank you. Does the board have comments, questions? What's the difference in the price difference between one and two for the average person when it's built out, their common fees? Because they're the ones that are going to pay for it. Well, we're working on the map we plan report. We got a lot report. more people in two if we do, or. We, we're working on a map plan report right now for Worley. I previously had done some projections to, to keep their annual cost below the, the threshold 
which last year was $958 per year. This year it's been lowered to $904 per year, which means we're going to have to trim back the scope of that project a little bit to stay below that. But in either a route, we're, we're going to stay below that threshold. In the case of Fishkill Plains, we had previously done a townwide water improvement. Um, we had a resolution to approve that. That set aside to 350000 and those rates were, had already been predetermined. So now we're maybe looking at an additional hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and we haven't done the analysis yet. But we're hoping we can bring on enough new customers and commercial customers to hopefully, you know, off that offset that additional expense. But we haven't we haven't amended that original townwide improvement until we get through this process. Now this will be part of the townwide water improvement district. Yes. Yeah, if you recall, we, we did a, uh, a borrowing to um, we develop the Cannon Well Field was right. one aspect. Water storage tank was another aspect. Uh, the connection to Fishkill Road was a third aspect, third phase. And the fourth phase is a filtration and booster building here at the Hamlet. So this could potentially be the fifth phase, which would be this transmission line. And we, so the we board would go back and amend that to include this. Okay. And so the board is uh, reminded that this is all for to end up getting the water for worldly homes. <laughs> so it's a little um, complicated. Route, but it's right. Pass more exactly. So it, it's a longer route. It's a little bit more than the cheaper. It's not the most expensive, but it gets us the most help, which we're – Fishkill Plains is a big problem. As you could see with those the, the, the violations I showed you, it's, you know, this is not a joke. It's not a joke for the people who receive that water, and, you know, it's our duty to make sure they have clean, safe water. So um, I'm sorry, any other comments? Yeah, I got a question for Scott. I, um, I know that we spoke about centralizing mostly the water supply from the Cannon property. And this is just an hypothetical. Uh, I know that probably the town is going to grow. So the day comes when we have no more water coming out of here, or worst scenario, let's say something happens. What is, have we ever thought of what if? Well, th there's a couple scenarios. Right now we have two wells across the street at Cannon. They're both rated and approved for approximately 430 gallons per minute. We have, I think, five smaller producing wells currently in the Hamlet. I think they total about 81, 81 gallons. 81, 81 gallons right. in this. The way the health department uh, views it is you have to, when you calculate what your potential uh, supply is, your capacity is, you take your best well out of service. So even though we have two wells good for 430 gallons a minute, you can only count on one of them, okay? So we're at 430 gallons per minute. That's what we can supply. If we were to drill a third well, literally right next to either of those two existing <coughs> wells, and you take the best well out of service, you basically double your capacity across the street just by drilling, you know, one more well. And we know the water is there. We may not get 430 gallons out of each of them, but we'd probably get 400 gallons a minute out, out of each of them. So that's one option. We can just drill one more well across the street. We, we found the location where the water is. We only drilled the two because that's all we needed at the time. Okay. So that would basically double our capacity just by drilling one more rock well. Alternatively, we are going to be connected to the, ham to the uh, county line, which pulls as much water as we want to pull from the county line. And, and thirdly, there are other large projects going on. The EPA is, is doing a large project that's taking water north, and, and we know that we have other water sources north that in the future could be all tied in and, and brought water back if in the worst case scenario situation to bring water back in that same line. So, I mean, I think we got the, I think we got the basis covered for any type of potential, you know, incident that might happen in the future. Could either engineer explain, um, tell the board about why they take the best well out of service? Wanna go ahead. Uh, Oh, they take the best well out of service because it, their, their worst case scenario is that you're going to have a summer day and your best well is out of service. They want you to provide the, the worst day conditions. So it's a very conservative assumption, but that's the health department. Uh, it's based on 10 state standards, which is the design standards the health department uses. But uh, again, it's a very conservative analysis. The worst analysis, case scenario. Right, yeah, and, and if a well blows up, if a pump blows up. A pump fails. Absolutely. Is the most, yeah. and, 
it's obviously a good yeah. rule because no. Even though you'll to. fix it in a very short period of, of course, time, but, but they still look. But at still, it. yeah, absolutely. Okay. So to satisfy the county's request for compliance, the plan is to hopefully submit one of these options to them to satisfy that request. Yes. In coordination with that one of these options is going to let us go forward with a map plan and report for Worley Homes, which we'll be setting the public hearing tonight for the end of June. Okay. I'd just like to remind the board, too, that with all of these infrastructure improvements, uh, the town board previously, Hopewell Glen was supposed to build a separate tank. Yes. And in lieu of that, they've, they're have they contributing a million dollars. 950,000. 950,000, I always round up. Yeah. 950,000, which is being used by the town board to upsize, to put the new tank in here at the field. And for some Contribute of the other, other infrastructure. Some of the other costs, which right. is going to enable all of this water to be available. And also, while the EPA is constructing the Ryan Drive water system that we call Hopewell North Water District, and we'll turn that infrastructure over to the town for a dollar. Uh, they are also going to contribute a share of the cost of the creation of the cannon well fields, the storage tanks. So it's not just being borne on the backs of uh, the current water users. There are contributions coming into it uh, from these other sources and also there's a formula that the board established that if there is any expansion of any of these districts to an area that does not now have water, there's a formula by which those new properties pay back, if you will, the taxpayers for the amount of uh, the cost of the improvements up to that date. So all of it is very equitably created to uh, enhance a great system but also uh, to get everybody paid their fair, their share, fair share. So, yes. Protect the people who have made the Correct. investment already for the infrastructure, right. which is fair. So all the, <laughs> I have learned a lot in the last uh, month and a half about water works more uh, than I probably wanted to know, but I've learned that storage and capacity is key. And uh, all Gotta these tanks, both. you have to have these redundancy and you have to have storage. Even if the, even the county has the big water line coming from the Hudson River, which is an endless supply of water, they still have to make sure that every system has their share of, of uh, storage. storage. So, um, okay, I'm sorry, any other comments, questions? Tom, as far as the contribution from the EPA, Yes. Is that a one-time thing, or is it a continuous amount of uh, money no, coming in? No, the EPA in? contributions one time for their share of the infrastructure we have okay. to build. Once that system's up and running, then the residents have to pay a water bill, which takes care of the operation and maintenance. It's the sa same as what we went through with the Shenandoah uh, Superfund site. Okay, any other comments, questions, concerns? So we will um, next month uh, adopt a resolution to accept one of these plans. Um, in the meantime, if you have concerns, comments, questions, we, our engineer, I'm we, sorry. We would like to adopt at the vote meeting at the end of the month so that we can finalize the map plan report for- May 31st? Right. Okay. Okay, so we will try to adopt a plan by May 31st meeting. So if the board has comments, questions, the next two, three weeks, please uh, contact our engineer or Mr. Lazzaroni, and I'm sure that uh, they could give you all the information you need so we can make a decision. Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you. it. Scott, can you grab the lights? Sure. Thank just, you. we're still in the workshop phase, right? Yeah. So just while we're on the subject of water, and um, we talked previously about fiscal planes, we are doing some monitoring right now. We had a meeting with the health department today. Council Mayor Nera was, was there along with, with John, myself. And, you know, we, we do have some concerns moving into the summer season about making sure that we have enough capacity at fiscal planes because it appears that the wells are decreasing in capacity. So um, over the next few weeks, we hope to get our arms around it a little better 
and have a recommendation ready, you know, for the board come the, the next meeting. I just wanted to kind of give you a heads up that we're going to have more discussion come the next meeting about Fishco plants. Okay. How'd that meeting go? Pretty good? Yeah, I think it went. I think it was pretty good. We got some issue kind of ironed out, so still more discussion, but it doesn't look too bad. Well, that's good news. It's a lot better than it looked before. Right. From our previous discussion? Yeah. We still okay, have to good. have a discussion with the, with the County Water Authority, which I did have a meeting with them as well today. And that's going to take, that'll probably be the critical item, you know, to, to get concurrence from them that our proposal will work. So, A lot of moving parts with the, uh, with the water uh, districts. Okay, thank you. Anybody have any other comments before we go into the, uh, the voting meeting? No? Okay. With that, uh, Madam Clerk, can you call the roll? Okay. Councilperson Marinero. Here. Councilperson Cassidy. Present. Councilperson Beepin. Here. Councilperson Franco. Present. Supervisor Del Sandro. Present. Okay, thank you. I have a few announcements. Uh, sorry, last town board meeting, we uh, had to cancel because we lost power in town. And uh, that was on April 26th. And we couldn't hold the town board meeting. So we had to uh, adjourn it to tonight. And unfortunately, but the good thing Deputy Supervisor Peter Cassidy was away and he was gonna miss it, so he got to now be here for the meeting. That's very good news, right, Peter? Just a couple announcements. On April 25th, I'd just like to let uh, the public know what I've been doing for the last month. Uh, April 25th, we had a meeting at the DEC up in New Paltz. Uh, we went with a large uh, town contingency. We went with the attorney, the engineer, the engineer's <coughs> assistant, myself, uh, the grant administrator, Stephen Gruber, his engineer, um, and the, to describe the meeting would be disappointing at best. So uh, the DEC had not many good things to say or to add about uh, our proposed project for Hillside Lake. Uh, the dam safety uh, administrator there said that the idea to fill in the swimming area is problematic uh, because uh, they consider it still to be a dam. Even though uh, we would fill in that large area, they still considered it to be a dam. They said that their definition of a dam is anything that would hold back water. So um, we sat and listened to uh, their comments, uh, which was hard to get, by the way. At the end of our presentation, we uh, sat there asking them for comments and concerns and it was a little bit until they started but once they started they kept going and uh, with the dam they had that concern um, so w we had a couple other ideas where if we would fill in the swimming area maybe we could push some sediment and dirt from the bottom of the lake towards that uh, that earthen embankment that we would make with the filling of the swimming area and they were a little bit liking that and they said that's a, that's a possibility that they would have to discuss it uh, internally and see what they could do but there was also a gentleman on the um, on the phone with us by conference call from the um, Army Corps of Engineers and he said that filling in the swimming area is US waters and that we would have to mitigate those two acres of water somewhere else on site so, you know, one minute they're saying we could possibly do it, then there's another government entity saying that we can't. It's uh, the biggest bureaucratic, bureaucratic government complex I've ever seen in my life. Um, I don't think they really, my opinion, I, I, I have to say that I don't think they care what the lake looks like. Uh, that's pretty much what I got from them, that they like it to be a natural wetland. They consider all the lily pads and vegetation and the overgrown to be a great uh, wetland environment, that they think that is wonderful. And we expressed how that uh, most of the residents there don't think it's wonderful and that we have to have a plan in place to remove this to help them. And um, we're going to have to now move forward with a, a sort of amended plan or maybe not. We're, we're, we're looking to hire 
uh, a consultant, a environmental consultant, uh, David Whitney uh, from Echo Solutions. Our engineer is going to reach out to him and see where uh, get some ideas on what we can do to ascertain the permits needed. Um, we really would like to move forward with the, the grant that we got from the DEC, and I would also love to move forward with the vegetation removal, even though there were some concerns with that, but I think we could work it out once we get this consultant on board. Uh, it's a little disheartening uh, to, to be at that meeting and hear the comments that came from them after, you know, we, we had a lot of work into this and we had a nice presentation and it's uh, disappointing at best, like I said. But I'll, I'll keep everyone briefed as to, uh, as we go along. Uh, hopefully, once we get some information on the permitting, uh, possibly we can have another meeting at uh, the Hillside Lake Firehouse again with the community so we could discuss moving forward. I've been active with the Dutchess County Mayors and Supervisors Association last month. Um, we have monthly meetings which I attend, and I discussed last time how I uh, restarted the discussion about the sales tax distribution in Dutchess County. Well, uh, I made my feelings be known, and that I think that the distribution is unfair, and we said that they told the county executive that they would like to meet to discuss it, and we met with him, and uh, it was another lukewarm meeting, I should say. Uh, the county executive said he would enter into discussions to uh, uh, renegotiate the contract, but that would take the cities of Beacon and Poughkeepsie to agree, because they are the two main entities in the contract, uh, which they formed the contract with Dutchess County. So <coughs> I doubt that would ever happen. The contract is in place until 2023. Um, so we're going to have to wait for a few years before that to really put our, the rest of the town's supervisors' minds together to come up with a plan where we could pressure the cities and the county to do a more fair and equitable uh, contract. Uh, after that meeting, we had another uh, monthly meeting with the mayors and supervisors, and they discussed with the rest of the uh, mayors and supervisors the meeting, and nobody was really happy with the, the outcome, but they, they, they thought that's what was going to happen. Um, I've, had a, I've had a few more meetings with other supervisors from Fishkill and Wappingers about sharing services. Uh, maybe we could do things together to be a little bit more cost effective, more efficient. Uh, I've been discussing with the town of Wappinger supervisor about a sharing of part time, uh, part time for each of us, a human resource director. We could maybe do a, a ro rotating schedule within the two towns, uh, maybe three days and two days or something like that. It, we really need to get a, a human resource person to get us really out of the stone age here because it's. Um, is, is really needed. And I'll keep you on the, posted on the progress there. In that same uh, shared services vein, uh, we had many discussions about water, like today. Uh, we hosted uh, Town of Fishkill here on the 11th, and they brought uh, the Village of Fishkill engineer, the Town of Fishkill supervisor and their engineers. Um, Myself, our town attorney, our town engineer was here. We had a very productive meeting. Uh, we had some uh, discussions about problems that we have, that they have, and problems that we have with Dutchess County with the Water and Wastewater Authority, which uh, that is a, um, another entity that I'm not going to get into, but they have a very austere take or pay policy. And the neighboring towns and I agree that maybe we could help each other better than they can. So we're going to explore possibility of a waterworks development type of project and aquifer protection so we can help our southern towns together. Uh, maybe we can have things a little bit more cost effective than, uh, than county water. And uh, in the process, we, we, we help anybody who needs to get water that, who doesn't have it. 
Uh, last month, I also met with Commissioner Glenn Marchi and Director Chris Barkley from the Dutchess County Department of Central and Information Services. We discussed the shared services program that Dutchess County offers, uh, everything from purchasing paper to printing to software, recreation, highway, uh, clerk's office software. Uh, it was very productive. They go out to bid on a lot of different um, uh, projects and um, um, buying, bidding. So uh, we could take advantage of that, and, and I've talked with our clerk, and I've talked with our highway superintendent and our director of recreation about utilizing these uh, software programs that the, the county is looking into. Um, also, the town controller and I met with uh, Jean Gunch. She works with the U.S. Homeland Security. This was a follow-up meeting with our submittal to FEMA for Superstorm Sandy. Uh, she needed to type a few loose ends, which we uh, signed the contract, or what was it, the contract or the agreement? Yeah, it was the... Uh, the, the, the submittal. The submittal. submittal. Form, yep. and, uh, and we had the check, right, 183000 which we received, so uh, thank you to FEMA. Um, that money was already uh, put into uh, the budget, correct, Mark? We already it was already kind of for counted. It. it was accounted for already. So I asked that first thing if we could use that for paving, but uh, it's been accounted for. But thank you to FEMA. Um, on Monday uh, the 16th, Councilman Marinaro and I met with the police department for our monthly supervisors meeting. We discussed future plans with the police department and uh, iron out a few other issues that's been going on in town. So thank you to them. I met with our rec director, Jan McHugh. Um, it's coming into the rec's busy time of year, and there's uh, many, many moving parts with our camp and uh, in Lime Kiln, and is getting very busy. So um, she had some concerns about the software, which was perfect because I just had the meeting with the Dutchess County um, Department of uh, Share Services, which she contacted to see what they can uh, provide for her. A uh, big thank you to Butch Kidney and his crew for preparing all the fields with such a limited time frame. Uh, it was a long winter and uh, the kids are playing, which they're very happy. Uh, I've been uh, having ongoing discussions with our town planner, Michelle Robbins, to possibly update our master plan. That's a bad word, I know, but uh, it's a huge undertaking. It's a large cost, um, which we'll try to get grants for. So. Um, it's also a, a great amount of work and, and time to do this. So we have to, we have to get committees together from the community and, um, and, and prepare. But with our economic and business revitalization committee, they will assist us to help this master plan update. So that's going to be a great benefit. We need to really look at uh, certain zoning areas in our town. Our uh, zoning map is really outdated. It's from, I believe, early 1980 and uh, it's been a little problematic lately. Um, so some things don't make a lot of sense, which we really have to address. Um, with the Business and Economic Revitalization Committee, I received letters from the Wappinger School Board and our planning board on who they recommend to sit on, sit on that board. Um, we almost have a full board. I've been discussing with Councilman Marinaro and I about it, and we will hopefully will have a pre-committee meeting the end of this month so we could kick that off, and I will give the board a list of the uh, members so we could uh, pass that uh, on a resolution, hopefully next month. Also, with economic development, there's been comments about the iPark sign. Uh, when the subdivision happened at Global Foundries, there were easements that were established to allow for the back buildings and back properties on that campus to have some uh, signage, some road frontage, because they're not they're not near the road. They're they're in the back. Um, so this is why they didn't have to come back to the planning board because it was already approved when they did the when they did the subdivision. Um, so also National Resources went in front of the sign review board which we, which we started, which has been a huge success by the way. Um, it's um, a, a three member board where when you have some 
issues and problems with the, the, the zoning of the signs, we could come, they go there for relief. They've helped out many small businesses already. They've helped out uh, suites at Heritage Square off of Route 52, Summerlin Plaza, they've helped Farmers Insurance, Rhinebeck Foot Care, uh, the Verizon store at the Arthur Burke Corners, even that new McDonald's that's coming in, there were sign issues which they went to the sign review board. So it's been very successful. Um, people are very happy with it. I've got a lot of great feedback from businesses, which I talk to them all the time, and they're happy that there are some, the signs are always going to be a problem uh, because everybody wants more and bigger signs, and unfortunately, a lot of members of the community don't want bigger signs. They want, they want something smaller, less obtrusive, but we try to meet somewhere in the middle. Um, you know, the, the, the Global Foundry site is a 450-acre industrial site. We're trying to get this redeveloped. Uh, we want to get more jobs in our town and have more businesses go there so they could pay more taxes. This is why we're doing our Economic Development Committee. This is why the board passes all the zoning changes so we could try to help uh, the tax base. So with that, it goes hand in hand with signage. Uh, some people might not like it, but, it's, but it is important. Uh, we'll be forming the Veterans Committee tonight. Councilman Franco and I have been busy with this committee. We actually had a meeting last night here. Uh, we had our, the new Commissioner of Veterans Services, Marco Viello, came, and a Veterans Counselor, uh, Kyle, C what was his Cusiemba. name? Cusiemba. Um, they came, they gave us a great talk. They talked to our, our, most of the members of the board who are gonna be on this board were there. They discussed all the services they offer to, uh, to veterans. Most veterans don't even know the services that are out there for them. So it was a real eye opener, I, I think so. I, I'm, I'm thankful for them to coming and I thank Councilman Franco for help organizing that. Um, I had a meeting with Bob Balkind, the Dutchess County Commissioner of Public Works last week. He came down to discuss a few projects uh, proposed for our town in 2019 and 2020. Uh, one big project is going to be the refurbishment of Beekman Road uh, from the Taconic Parkway to the Beekman Town Line. Uh, also, they have a small culvert bridge on Beekman Road right before the Taconic Bridge that overpasses the Taconic. Nobody could really see it, but there's a culvert bridge that will be replaced there. And also possibly a small bridge on Phillips Road that they have that's due to be replaced. Um, he was very helpful. Uh, he, he spoke to our highway superintendent several times, offered his assistance with anything that they could do. So thank you to Mr. Balkind. I met with uh, farmer Dave Kaler about the Healthy Harvest CSA at uh, Colmeyer Farms. Uh, it's a community-sponsored agricultural project. Uh, he said this year is looking great. They have about 25 new family members participating. Um, they had, um, they're going to have on Mother's Day, uh, open farm day, which they are trying to get more people there. So they'll have a little refreshments for people to come. It'll be from uh, one to four. So uh, Councilman, you could go, they'll uh, have refreshments for you. We, uh, we, I met with the town safety committee. Uh, it's comprised of town employees. Um, we had our first meeting. It was uh, productive, I should say. It was an eye-opener. Uh, they discussed items in town about uh, things in uh, town buildings and on town campus that could be potential safety concerns. Uh, we reviewed comments from our insurance carriers, and they comprise a list that we have to address, and we try to fix those items on the list, um, which I'll be discussing with the board but uh, it was a busy month last month, to say the least. And uh, with that, I will, uh, do I, we have received the minutes for the March 1st and March 22nd, 2018 um, meetings. Has everybody received them? Was there any additions, subtractions, concerns with the minutes? No. No, okay, thank you, clerk. And uh, with that, do I have a, um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes for March 1st and March 22nd, 2018? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes approved. Thank you. There are no additions to the agenda. Now we will uh, have courtesy of the floor. 
Uh, anybody could come up and speak about any general town issues that you wish, anything on our agenda, anything that, anything that you want. You too, Bob. <clears throat> Mr. DeMasso, how are you? Good evening, how are you doing? Not bad, thanks. Okay. Um, this evening I would like to speak uh, in regards to the MS4 annual report. Um, and first I would like to ask, with a show of hands, did you all read it? Completely? No, well, not me. Show of hands, anybody, everybody? I read it halfway to Halfway? So nobody has halfway. read it in its Some of the other completion. stuff was, uh, I, I kind of went through it. Nobody so. has read it other than Councilman Marinaro in its entirety, is that correct? No, he didn't read it all either, he said. Okay. Well, then I'll be a little bit more specific, and that being the supplement area in Hillside Lake. And in that supplement area, and I'm going to do this in two or three different phases, if I may. Sure. Uh, regarding the grant money for failing septic systems, uh, DEC statewide uh, has a program that was announced on December 13th by Governor Mario Cuomo's office um, for $75 million. Uh, yes, as was previously stated, $75,000 is allocated towards Hillside Lake and Sylvan Lake in Dutchess County, but I'm appalled given all of the claims of failing septic systems in Hillside Lake that nobody has reached out to the community in regards of this availability. Well, this was the first time we heard of it. The pro that I heard of it was the uh, first he, time I heard about this the, was. The stormwater consultant obviously knew about it as he drafted this report, and I would think that he is in communication with the town. Yeah, he, he discussed it with us about a month and a half ago. And like we said, we had our, one of our engineer consultants reach out to the Board of Health. And as the engineer uh, did describe, uh, that we possibly have to be the administrator of those funds. We're trying to work that out. Is that correct, Scott? Correct. And from the right. governor's announcement until the fact that it processes through the agencies is normally six to 12 months. So we can't even start soliciting anyone to come in and apply for the program because we don't know the parameters that the agencies are going to place on the funds. It was new to the health department too. I mean, they had to first get their arms around it. Right, right out of the box, they said, we, we can't begin to administer this. So it was going to go nowhere. And then we offered, well, what if we administer it? And well, we got to look, so it's going to have to be a follow up and you know, but at least we initiated it. Right, we'll, we'll follow up to make sure. I mean, this is a great thing. Uh, We're the I only agree. two, I only agree. two towns. It would be greater if we get to utilize it, but if nobody knows about well, it. Well, I mean, for 45 days we've known. I, I, I don't think any more can, could have well, been done. Then let me go a little bit further in the okay. same MS4 report. Uh, and I believe this is probably about page 52 or 53 or thereabouts. Uh, Mr. Artis goes on to say, in addition to extensive documentation specific to Hillside Lake, may be found on the town of East Fishkill website, which is also updated right on a regular basis. It's been non-existent for over a year. That's part of the report you guys are about to vote on tonight. I'm, I'm, and I'm going to make references to the document as it appears as a PDF on the town website. On page 21, it uh, makes a reference to a YouTube video. Please provide specific URL address where notices can be accessed and not as specifically says not the home page. This is on page 21 of the report. It's a YouTube vi video. It's unavailable. On page 24 of the same PDF, um, 5A was an annual report public meeting held in this reporting period. And the response is yes. And the date stated is May 25th, 2017. That particular meeting was for acceptance of the previous cycle MS4 report, just like this meeting tonight is. So is it prudent to say that 
Tonight's meeting for acceptance of this report is a meeting in regards to the next cycle, and you can put yes again? No, my, my uh, yes, I, my understanding is that your comments that you made last year were presented in this report. Yeah, which I think is totally unfair, and I'll address that momentarily okay, because well, I don't get to respond to the, uh, to the claims made in this report for another year. I'm, I'm not saying that you're, that your concern isn't right or justified, but I, I think don't it needs to be corrected. That's where I want to go. I don't it's make the, the DEC laws. System. The DEC so you got to ask DEC to change the process. Uh, no, sir, because I believe it was in 2014 mm -hmm. there was, in fact, a public meeting for public comment for MS4. It requires two signatures to ask the town to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's totally a waste of the town's money, to be honest with you, and that's why I haven't done it since. However, it can be done. It should a, be done. To have another meeting? Well, or on, for the, I would just in the that. future, that's what should happen. Right. Prior to the submittance and the acceptance of this annual report. I mean, I don't see it. That's not, uh, I don't think that's uh, not too bad to have another meeting. Well, there, you know? unfortunately, a, a, a stenographer had to be paid for. And like I said, it, it's an expenditure. I, I, I don't think that it needs to be that formal, but certainly something differently needs to be done than this. Or we can add it to another meeting perhaps, but okay, continue. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, it wasn't an interruption. It's an exchange. I, I appreciate the exchange. <clears throat> um, and that's really where I went with in last year at, on the May 25th meeting is how does, how does one comment in time if this report is only available in April for presentation to you, April or May, it was April when initially it was supposed to happen, okay? How does one comment on this report? You can't. Was an annual, same page, page 24, was an annual report public meeting held for all MS4s contributing to this report during this reporting cycle? The answer is left blank. Were comments received during this reporting period? Yes. May 25th of last year. Pages 27 and 28 in the same PDF. Under uh, 3A, what types of generating sites, sewer sheds were targeted for inspection during this reporting period? And it says septic maintenance. And it says sewer sheds, Hillside Lake. Watershed, Hillside Lake. Um, was there septic maintenance done in Hillside Lake? Can I have Mr. Artis answer that? Okay. And 20, page 28, uh, what types of illicit discharges have been found during this reporting period? And it is stated other, laundry detergent slash oil leak. Sediment by New York State DEC is a pollutant of concern. It is an illicit <coughs> discharge if an MS4 is discharging sediment into a 303D impaired water body. And then it says, is the above information available in GIS? And it says, yes. And is it available on the web? No. Why? If it's a, if it's a digital format, why cannot the general public see what the GIS outfalls are, where the catch basins and whatnot. Find out. Again, I'll reiterate, this is, the, this is the document you guys are going to accept tonight. On page 50 in the PDF, <coughs> and this is in the Hillside Lake 303D Impaired Water Body Evaluation and Assessment says the town of East Fishkill has conducted sampling, testing, and monitoring of Hillside Lake to include soil samples, 
and samples from catch basins that ultimately discharge into Hillside Lake. That was three years ago. Town Highway Department, excuse me, Town of East Fishgale Highway Department also prioritizes cleaning catch basins and road maintenance within Hillside Lake Watershed. That has only significantly improved because of the persistence of the community. And the DEC directed the town to do so. And there's a reason why I state that also. Page 51, information on the Hillside Lake Water Quality Improvement Project may be found by going directly to the Town of East Fishkill website, or more specifically, the following URL address. And I believe that is the page that says uh, temporarily or uh, on hold that has been like that for almost a year now. And then on the same page, it mentions the $75 million approved uh, grant approved by the uh, governor's office again, and $75,000. This is the page I just referenced. Due to potential issue with fundings, the project has been postponed until further notice. This is what's been there for almost a year now. Page 58. Uh, it says Mr. DeMasso cites an attached document as 303D, New York State DEC Directive. Said document is a memorandum from New York State DEC uh, dated March 21, 2016, to former Supervisor Hicken uh, regarding MS4 audit. See attached. Uh, Mr. Masso says, states that this mem memorandum was ignored and the town did not respond, which is incorrect. And uh, he says, based on verbal discussions with the department, the matters are resolved. Um, verbal. Verbal between who? And if there is a correspondence between the community and DEC, and then the town gets involved and it's a verbal arrangement, how come that the community isn't informed of what the resolve is? Also cites an attached document as removal of sediment. Said document is a memorandum from DEC to the former supervisor dated April 28, 2014. States this memorandum was ignored, which all concerns contained in the April 28, 2014 memorandum uh, of specific and major concern. The town ha was a discharge of sediment from properties located on Dr James Dorlin Drive, discharging in Hillside Lake. Those properties on James Dorlin Drive were a scapegoat. I can show you pictures from, oh, well, whenever Hurricane Sandy was. And across from 229, uh, East, East End Road is a piece of property owned by the town. It's sloped between West Sunset and East End Road. And there was a, a gorge there of erosion from the water that came from West Sunset down and into the direct MS4 conveyance system that is significantly closer to Hillside Lake than James Dorland Drive that was targeted as a contributor of all the sediment going into Hillside Lake. And I can show you pictures. It is now, or has since been piped, but that's town property and town storm water and town sediment discharging into Hillside Lake. It was a gorge.
with regard to Mr. DeMasso's illicit discharge complaint, the town has a procedure in place for reporting illicit discharges to include detection and elimination of illicit discharges. There's a town of East Fishkill complaint form. The particular complaint on the date that I contacted uh, Rick Cronizer, the, I don't know if he is still the MS4 coordinator now or, uh, or he was then, that could not wait to fill out a form and bureaucracy to take its course. <clears throat> uh, and the fact of the matter is, for sediment removal, there was, in fact, a, a directive by uh, New York State DEC. And in fact, I believe there was a, a permit requested for sediment removal at the outfalls, but it never happened. So I don't know why anybody would request a permit for sediment removal at four outfalls and then claim that there was never a directive to do it. I would say with fair certainty the town wasn't going to just do it on its own. Mr. Artis goes on to say that testing performed by the town of East Fiskill in February 2014 at four locations entering and exiting Hillside Lake confirmed otherwise. Uh, that being, uh, I believe it had to do with uh, failing storm, uh, failing septic systems. It says two of the samples resulting test results were positive for human bacteria. Bacteroids or, he, or human E. coli. I am aware of that. Any of those tests that tested positive were not within the lake itself, aside from one which was at the mouth of, if I may use that term, of an outfall. And Scott, you were there for, for those tests. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So I didn't witness they, the test. I, mean, I, I authorized the test, but I wasn't there present when they took them. For the sampling? Okay. Uh, well, the map that shows where the samples were actually taken is uh, precise. And those samples that were taken were, in fact, at the very, either the last uh, catch basins before it goes into Hillside Lake or at the entrance into Hillside Lake of town stormwater. That makes it town stormwater conveyance pollution. The town is, it's the town's obligation to find the source of those pollutions. Whether it's failing sept septic systems upstream, and if it's the perimeter, then, then so be it. Then, then we need the inspections as previously indicated. But I mentioned that about three years ago. May I ask how much this document costs the town? I'll have to look it up and get back to you at that. Okay. Is it a variable? Does it vary by size? Mark, pages? do you know in the budget what it is? I, I don't know what the amount is. I'll look it up and let you know. Okay. Because there's an awful lot of fluff in it. Either way, New York State says we have to do it. I, I realize that. Uh, but there's a lot of fluff in it, a lot of redundancy. I personally consider a lot of slander and defamation of myself. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to go off at the top of my head on one of these because I was better prepared two weeks ago for the last meeting when this was going to be presented. And I have resigned to the fact that this has worn me thin. Is what? Excuse me? I couldn't hear the I said this is worn me thin. thin. I, I, I actually find this to be slanderous. It is unnecessary to to try to make a buffoon out of me for coming to the town and DEC for what I perceive as pollution. Okay? You see the state of the, you see the state that the lake is in now, and now there's a question of even remediating it. 
But I'll continue with one last thing. Mr. Artisan, in his report here, goes on to say uh, erroneously that I uh, may have, uh, he doesn't know who I received a telephone call from, but I was given wrong information. What I referred to, and the meeting that he is referring to, and uh, I believe it is the uh, May 25th of last year meeting, uh, where I had said I had a correspondence. I didn't say I had a telephone call. I said I had a correspondence. He said I got wrong information. That correspondence, in fact, is an email. And I have that email here. And the date of the email is October 19, 2016. It comes from Jeff Myers. I'm sure Mr. Artis is familiar with the name Jeff Myers. He's the director of water for New York State DEC out of Albany, New York. Okay, Mr. DiMasso, here is the update regarding this matter. And we're talking about uh, whether or not the town uh, had any uh, reply to the directive. As of October 2016, the DEC Regional Office in White Plains had not received the assessment and remediation plan for the MS4 outfalls discharging into Hillside Lake that was requested of the town of East Fishkill. So it wasn't a telephone call. I didn't get erroneous information. It came from the director of water, and it's an email, and here it is in blue and white. And you guys are going to sign to receive to to accept this for a public document that's going to slander my name with the New York State DEC. Again, nobody read it in its entirety, for the record. Mr. Artis, would you like to comment if you wanted to? Uh, I'd just like to make a quick comment before Mr. Artis starts. Um, uh, with the website issues, I'll make sure that I will personally make sure that uh, whatever needs to be fixed on the website will. There will be a cost, but we will make sure it gets done. Um, number two, um, and I'm sorry about your disgruntledness and your anger. I, uh, you know, I, I don't, uh, huh? Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing. I'm not disagreeing with you. But I know that we've uh, come a long way with uh, certain hillside lake issues, and uh, the MS4 annual report is. Um, a document that we must do by the state of New York. It's, a, it's by law, and we have to uh, comply with all the laws. So we hire somebody to make sure that we are in compliance. is very important to the town. Uh, and whether there's set a, there's this um, maybe we have a different opinion on what happens with sediment removal or E. coli and other deposits in the lake or what have you. Uh, uh, we're going forward we're trying to help the hillside lake the town owns a lake now we are trying to move forward in a um in in, in a speedy fashion that we can i i've met with D dec and other entities and we are trying I, and to hear comments like this i you're allowed to say whatever you please god bless but uh it's it's disheartening when when i know that i put my best foot forward and the rest of the board has also um but that's all i have to say mr uh artist could you respond to okay. a few comments yes i can respond to a, a fair amount of it and again as usual as per the dec requirements i will go through the youtube video and the clerk's minutes and provide more formal responses to comments in next year's annual report. Unfortunately, that is the way it works. <clears throat> First of all, I'm going to start with Mr. Damaso's last comment regarding um, his statement that what I was responding to, as I believe Mr. Damaso stated, the town did not respond to a memorandum from the DEC dated in April 2014. The fact, and I stated that was incorrect because we did in fact respond, and I included that as an attachment 
and I believe he said he spoke to a Jeff Myers, and I don't know why Mr. Myers doesn't know that. Um, I believe he does work at a central office. Um, this was sent in directly to Natalie Brown at Region 3. Um, and again, there's a copy of that in this report. Uh, and of course, there was another instance where Mr. DeMasso stated we didn't respond to the DEC when in fact we did. That was incorrect. And I also included that response to the DEC in this report as well. So it wasn't, certainly wasn't slandering Mr. DeMasso. I was just stating factually that that information was incorrect. And the fact we did respond. Uh, jumping to his uh, comment, um, the verbal comment that I got from DEC, <clears throat> on that uh, one memo that he states that we did send a response into DEC, I tried, uh, probably the same frustration you had at your meeting with DEC, I tried probably every six or eight weeks to solicit a response from the DEC to my response to their memos. After close to a year, I was just requesting confirmation that you received mm -hmm. my response to your comments. And to date, I, it's been over two years now, I have not had a word. I have had verbal discussions with two superiors to this individual, and by superiors I mean higher up in rank. Um, they're not gonna put anything in writing. Uh, they just told me the matter is closed, it's not an issue, uh, they're understaffed, and that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna get into any more details they told me off the record. Um, there were some issues that are just off the record and they're not gonna put anything in writing. So that's where the verbal confirmation comes in. To try to start, um, again, my pages are not numbered as they are on the website. They go through minimum control one, page two or three and whatnot. Um, the reporting period. When they ask, was a public meeting conducted during this reporting period. It's specific to this period, March 10th, 2017, 2017 to March 10th, 2018. That meeting from last year is the date that goes into this report because that fell in this reporting period. Next year's report, this date will go into the annual report and it's just, just the way it is. Um, as far as the issue relative to not having the opportunity to see an annual report until April. I think I went through a fairly detailed explanation because Mr. DeMasso had that comment last year. And that's, that's a good question. One might say, well, the end of the reporting period is March 10th or March 9th. Why can't it be ready in a couple days? Um, there's a number of factors that go into that and that's one of the reasons DEC allows you until June 1st to have that in. Um, number one, you have to meet with different department heads, you have to compile a lot of information. Um, and more specifically with the Town of East Fishkill as a member of the MS4 Coordination Committee, they provide a lot of uh, input into our plan, our stormwater management program over the course of the year. And every March, they put together an annual report, which is documentation that we can insert into this report. Then, on this, and they meet the second Wednesday of every month. Then on the second meeting in April, they follow up with additional documentation, which I believe this year was April 14th. And I was able to get this, uh, maybe it was April 12th or 11th, but this report is dated April 13th. I got it done within a couple days of that, but I can't even complete this report until that second Wednesday in April, so to speak, uh, of any calendar year. And it's just the way the committee works. Um, and again, I have to meet with different departments and get other information. Um, question where he, uh, he felt uh, something was left blank, where it was questioned, did all MS4s? That's if you have a collaborative effort where one entity is preparing an annual report for multiple MS4s. That's why that is left blank. They do allow that. We discussed that at the Dutchess County Coordination Committee and we decided that was a bad idea to have one entity prepare all the annual reports for every single municipality in Dutchess County that's an MS4. So that's why that's left blank. Um, septic, uh, I can't even read my own writing here, something about the septic, separate from Hillside. Uh, 
I'd have to hear that again, I'm sorry. Um, relative to illicit discharge, what this report is asking is what's been reported to the town, what's been identified actually as an illicit discharge. Hopefully, at the end of the day, we get to the source. We don't always find the source. Um, sometimes we detect it, sometimes we eliminate it, but sometimes we don't, because we, sometimes we can't get into private properties or behind different properties to know where this is coming from. So, um, you know, hopefully there are procedures in place to try to do that, but we can't always find the source. Um, relative to, is this outfall information available on GIS? Yes, it is. It's available on county GIS, which is not compatible with the town's GIS. Um, so that's the simple but unfortunate answer to that question. Um, if there's any issues with the URL addresses, it's you know something we have to look into. Um, I spoke about the verbal conversation I had relative to trying to solicit a response comment, uh, which, I, like I say, to date I've yet to receive. And again, talking about the 2014 April, April memo, the outfalls were identified by the DEC for us to look into. There was three outfalls, I believe. We looked into it. We numerous site inspections, Councilman Monaro, uh, Scott, we met with the town attorney uh, on a number of occasions, met with the property owners. Um, we eventually resolved those, those three issues out there. And again, that memo went directly to Natalie Brown and, and is also in this report. Um, as far as fluff, the end report is what it is. Um, I've actually spoken to Natalie Brown on numerous occasions to try to get the annual report changed since 2008. She's tried to speak to her superiors and, and nothing's come of it. And what also does take some time is going through your YouTube video from last year and trying to develop all the comments and then provide responses to it. Um, and and that's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I mean, if there's any, like I said, I will formally respond to any additional comments or, and actually, you can, anyone can comment any time of year. Mr. Damaso is correct. If two people request a public meeting, you have to hold public meeting and it has to be duly notified as a public hearing. Um, but that can be done any time of year. I think the last time when it was done, about four years ago, I think it was July, September, and that's July or August, I believe. So that's pretty much it, unless anybody else has any additional questions. You know, Mr. Artis, I, I, I just probably I said this before in a public forum and, and probably maybe if not last year, the year before. You know, <clears throat> it, it's, uh, it's frustrating to hear this stuff go on. Uh, these agency mandate certain requirements and, uh, from the town to comply. And then when we try to reach out to them, you know, it, it is hard for them to respond and to cooperate. To me, this is government that is not functioning. I see this at all levels. Uh, this happens in the school districts where they, they, somebody beyond the desks writes an, a memo that has to go out and uh, mandates requirement with restriction and timing schedules. So, that, you know, when we comply, it costs us money. It costs taxpayers money. So when, when we gotta be a, a bickering back and forth and this big piece of paper that you, compi that you compile, probably the, it, it's a rhetoric document that doesn't even, it, it just gets put in there just to comply for a requirement. But like somebody said, how much does this cost? To us, to the taxpayer, this is important. And, and so, you know, I, when I hear these stories, it, it, my blood pressure goes up. I, I mean, at what point will the local state, the Dutchess County, and all the localities really cooperate with the town, with the town personnel that is trying to respond to these demands? And, 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 and again, I'm gonna say one more time, if you can, you could put this comment in next year, the year after, if you have time, put it in this year so they might look at it. But this is important. They have to read that, you know, 
it is time. Attend the, we, we had the meetings. I mean, probably my time is not that expensive. But when we have to hire engineers and we have to hire outside engineers to review and we have to hire you, and with all, with, with all respect, your time is valuable and you deserve to get paid. But where is the accountability to the taxpayers? Actually, everything you said, I couldn't agree with you more. Where does the discussion stop and where those common sense really begins? It, because you know what? It seems like we all talk in the same language, but nobody's listening. So, I mean, where do we go from here? Because this story is not going to end today. And you know, they send us information like the watershed. It's important for New York City to get clean water, but we got to comply. We got to make sure that uh, with your help and cooperation and, and everybody else that our local citizen comply at their expense, but then who drinks the water that we send down to the city clean? Not me, not you. So, you know, it, it, it's not a two-way channel. And so it builds a frustration, uh, especially for somebody like me that comes from the private sector, uh, to see this stuff go on year after year after year. So. Okay. I'm sorry if sometimes there is frustration addressed to you because you produced this document, but uh, you know I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for the other people in the community. They have to put out uh, their time and efforts to get something done. But I also feel sorry for you know everybody in town hall and the and the taxpayer of East Fishkill. They have to put up with this shenanigans because this is what they are. They are shenanigans. As far as the bureaucracy with the state, I be honest with you, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I'm very sensitive to the fact that this is an unfunded mandate. I always have been. Um, I try to do the minimum amount required to keep municipalities in compliance. Uh, sometimes it takes more, sometimes it takes less, dependent upon the municipality. I understand your frustration with the New York State DEC. I go through that same frustration. People I used to work with have now since retired or have been going on to different divisions. There's all new people there. They do not work at the municipalities. There's no one I can just pick up the phone and call anymore. I do have one individual in Albany I can call if it's a construction issue. That's pretty much it. I have no one, you know, really a go-to person I can just go to and get a straight answer. And um, one last thing I want to say is that as the the people that used to be your contacts are retiring. Yes. I, I, I don't want to use any, but I really see the people coming in. They have no common sense. And that's going to be an issue. I'll re they'll use a list. No comment? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll comment. They'll, be used, they'll give them a list. And even if you make a phone call, if that, whatever you're addressing is not on their list, no. your comment is not going to be listened no. or heard. So that's going to be even a worse scenario. And, and this is not only an issue in the Division of Water. It's pretty much prevalent in all yep. divisions yep. right now. Yeah. Yeah, well. <laughs> but I understand your frustration. I'm sympathetic to it. I go through my own set of frustrations with the state. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And yeah, that's right. I mean, we, uh, we're under, it's, uh, we don't make these laws. We have to abide by them. They're unfunded mandates. The governor, state legislature, these are the people that uh, make the laws in the state. So, yes, Mr. DeMasso. Well, Mr. Artis came up here and rebutted and refuted some of the things that I had said. And I would suggest to you and or the town board to request that he edit his report. Uh, he, when he stood up here just now, he made mention of uh, the four outfalls that DEC pointed out. DC, DEC also pointed out or made mention of a gravel road. And some individuals' perception of a gravel road may be different than others because it was totally ignored. Mr. Artis was, in fact, in receipt of brochures from Natalie Brown from New York State DEC in the 2014 timeframe regarding the North Hillside Road extension. This is a picture of sediment flowing on August 31st, 2014. 
It happens to be two catch basins away from the outfall into Hillside Lake. He also made mention of sometimes you can't find the source and blah, 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 blah. The particular incident that was made mention enters his report regarding an illicit discharge form and Rick Cronizer. The source was found. The pinnacle of all of that conversation was Mr. Cronizer's unfamiliarity with an illicit, or excuse me, with a report for illicit discharge for MS4. He didn't know what I was talking about. This is the town stormwater maintenance oper officer, and he didn't know what I was talking about. He found the source. It happened to be construction going on that was probably 30 feet from a catch basin that goes directly into the stormwater system. So again, this, is, this document is a bunch of malarkey. I'm slandered in it. I suggest you request them to redact it or edit it. Thank you. Any other comments on uh, general town issues on the agenda on any, uh, anything? Just, uh, just one comment. Uh, Mr. Hardis, would it be very difficult if in case we were to, to uh, amend some of, the, some of the statements made for this year for the town board to vote on? Is it a time issue? Is it, would it be possible at all? Of course. I'm sorry. No. Speaking to the microphone. Um, there is a time constraint. It has to be in by May 31st. Um, the illicit discharges is what I, I compile that information from the town. Um, I can add another one. You know, it's no big deal to make a, a small revision um, relative to my response to comments and all the attachments. That would be more problematic um, if there was something that. I have no problem also sitting down with Mr. Damaso at some point if the town so desires. And we can work out some of, the th some of these things and you know, maybe add an addendum to next year's report if there's something he feels is an error. But again, I certainly, again, there's no slander directed towards Mr. Damaso in his report. But again, if there's minor revisions, that can certainly be made um, so long as it's into DEC by June 1st. I'll, yeah. I'll facilitate a meeting. I'll call Mr. Damaso okay. to, to maybe we have that meeting. Okay. Thank Great. you, Mr. Artis. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Good evening. Wow. Good evening. Uh, I'd just like to say that uh, in looking at this, that there's progress. Um, looks like there's progress that's taking uh, place for Worley Homes. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of quick questions, and maybe it may be um, more appropriate for the public hearing. I'm not sure, but just put it out there. Um, first question is, uh, given the time frame, will the town still be able to apply for with a WIA grant that may be able to um, reduce the cost to the homeowners and or uh, be able to return to the scope? Because Scott, you had mentioned that the scope may change a little bit, the cost are going down, so there would be a corresponding reduction in the scope of the project. So my first question is, uh, are we still able to or in, in, uh, in a position to apply for the WIA grant for this just, project just so you know the town planner i have instructed uh she has already applied for several grants for duchess county new york state uh and we have not only entered worley homes as one of the submittals but other hillside lake and a couple others that we have concerns about and we do multiple because we don't know who we could get funding for so we have already done this okay excellent and i just for clarification point, when we're talking, you're talking about uh, there are three potential project uh, routes. Routes. Yep. And the one that uh, we're looking at would provide excess capacity for future businesses and growth, etc. Would you know, in, in the for the private sector, would they also be taking on some of that additional cost, or is that something that's already been? Uh, factored in given what maybe the private sector has done already I just no, they have that hasn't been factored in correct me if I'm wrong uh, engineer that uh, depending on who and how many we get they have to pay their contribution towards the uh, the water improvement line so uh, it is more expensive the route that 
I'd like to see be implemented, but we're hoping that the buy-ins with all the uh, potential new businesses to enter into it will offset all the costs. Okay. And if, with I that could just, if I could just add to that, what we did is we took the TINA route and we used that as a baseline in terms of expense. And then for the other two routes, we, we held that baseline so that Worley and Revere's rate would not increase and that any increase had to be borne elsewhere, either by other districts, the enterprise fund, new commercials, but we, we held your rate, for example, fixed to say, just because we use another route, you shouldn't have to pay any more for it. So we use that TINA route as a baseline for Worley and Revere. Okay, and what I, I guess what I'm asking is can that base, and that's great news that it won't go up, that's always a plus. All we're saying is we use that as the baseline. As the baseline, is there potential that it could go lower without reducing the scope of the project given, let's say we get, for, you know, the town gets fortunate and one of those grants comes in and or uh, the private sector or the other uh, potential beneficiaries come in and pick up some of the costs, would that number go down is what I'm asking. How, how would well, right that now work? there's an excess. So we haven't done the analysis to see whether it's the businesses that will cover it all, it will be the enterprise fund and then get reimbursed over time. But the short answer is that don't expect a reduction. If anything, prices are going up right now. Every, every job we put out to bid, we see that the prices are going right up now. I had a meeting with the uh, Water Authority. They, they're witnessing the same thing, that the prices are going up right now. So it, it, we're going to do our best to hold our estimates. But unless we get a grant, you know, a grant, an additional grant changes the picture. Right. Uh, but I, I wouldn't hold out a lot of hope unless we get a grant that you're going to see any kind of reduction in your cost. Okay, so we're crossing our fingers for the grant, uh, and that would be the um, potential for a reduction in the court, potentially, or possibly. 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 Right. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other comments? No, no, Bob. No, no. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Um, just a. Uh, quick comment and then a quick question when you talk about all that you did in the month i feel like i was working with you and i get exhausted just listening to you i don't know how you do it but anyway thanks bob maybe you could come with me there a couple yeah, days yeah. he's the deputy, um, deputy supervisor there's yeah. food at them all on the authorization for the uh, uh brush drop off i i don't know if it was rain or snow that you know um on the last brush drop off. Oh, the last brush drop. The off. last one. That was an emergency. What we do you mean? Did that as an emergency. We only did it for two weeks because yeah. of those last big storms. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, now it'll be now that it's going to go out to bid for the regular. How we do it through the month of June. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. June. Yeah, June and October. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I want to get at is if they could, fi if you could figure in, in case there's an issue. Whether issue, whether it's rain or whatever, because it's like four days one week and then four days the next week. So, you know, if it if it starts raining and somebody can't do it, can you do anything where you can have a rain date, for something like that, a little contingency plan? Because, I, you know, it, it's uh, once those days are gone, that they're gone. I can ask the, um, the whoever wins the bid. Uh, they, whoever's going to bid, there's only a few sites in town that qualify for the size we need, but uh, they seem very reasonable. Well, well where, where the last one was is, you know, uh, easy, accessible, right. uh, yeah. it's good and everything. The only thing is... Easy in, easy out, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, if it rains four days or, it, or whatever, I snow, if there's... A, to extend it, yeah, I can extend ask. extend yeah. it. All right, thanks, Nick. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Anything in town or anything on the agenda to discuss? No? You sure? Mr. Supervisor, at this time, do you mind if we sign the kids' papers? So they've been here a little. For the resolutions? Yeah. Okay. Uh, anybody? Otherwise, they're going to be here for the rest of the Who has the, uh, the papers to sign? Whoever needs to school? sign their papers, come up quickly, please. Make to a commercial, Mike. <laughs> this is your show the commercial of a pizza. Let me borrow your pen, please. Hello. Oh, he brought it.
close it there. Uh, I'll get something at the flea market for him. <laughs> <laughs> let's, um, let's continue. He, he'll come in mid-sentence mid here. Uh, let's start with the, the resolutions. We did... Uh, see, is that your new agenda? We did pass the first resolution at the last meeting. That was canceled. We had to get that. Uh, I was to sign the agreement uh, with the DOT for the Cow Drive Bridge replacement. Uh, I have signed it and sent it up to the DOT. Um, so that has been done. Uh, resolution number two, appoint a member to the Fire Advisory Board. Uh, Councilman Bipan, would you read that, please? Whereas the Fire Advisory Board has a vacancy, and whereas the chairperson has recommended the appointment of Frank Rufino be made to the board, and whereas the town board has interviewed and recommended candidate, now therefore be it resolved that Frank Rufino be and hereby is appointed as a member of the FAB, whose term will end on December 31st, 2018. Thank you, Councilman. Um, do I have a motion to appoint uh, Frank Rufino to the Fire Advisory Board? So moved. Second? Second. Aye. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Aye. Thank you. Number three, uh, request proposal for brush drop-off. Uh, Councilman Marinaro, would you read that? So what is the town has maintained a brush drop-off program uh, for the convenience of the residents of the town. And whereas the, the supervisor has proposed that the town continue with the drop, uh, brush drop-off program as well as advertise for request for proposal to provide a brush drop-off site. And whereas it is the desire of the town board to advertise for request for proposal for same. Now therefore be it resolved that the town supervisor and uh, town clerk B and nearby is authorized to advertise for request for proposal to provide for a brush drop-off point in the town during the spring and fall and be it further re resolved that said proposal should be received and evaluated by the town supervisor as a summary report and a summary report will be provided to the town board for authorization thank you councilman uh, do I have a uh, motion to authorize a request for proposals for brush drop-off? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Uh, usually these, uh, it is for the month of June, for the whole month, and October, and it's usually Wednesday through Saturday, and we will post the times once we get, once we award the bid. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Motion uh -huh. carried. Thank you. Number four, um, seasonal labors for highway. Uh, Deputy Supervisor, can you read that? Whereas the highway superintendent has interviewed and hired two full-time seasonal labors for the highway department, and the highway department has submitted a memo to the town board. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the town board does hereby acknowledge the hiring of Lori Ann Calciano, Jeff Vincent, Aram Mergian, Jr., and Matthew Heitman, as full-time seasonal laborers in the highway department and be it further resolved upon completion of their tasks, they will all be removed from the payroll. Okay, thank you. Uh, do I have a motion to acknowledge the hiring of the seasonal laborers for the highway? So move. Uh, second? Second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carried. Thank you. Number five, uh, Veterans Council, Councilman Franco. Approving supervisor's establishment of a Veterans Council. Whereas the supervisor has proposed the establishment of a committee with members recommended by him to assist the town in veterans relations and communication. And whereas the proposed Veterans Council would assist the supervisor and town board in its matters concerning the veterans of East Fishkill community. And whereas the goals and objectives of this committee are set forth on the attached mission statement. And whereas the supervisor and town board will work with the various private organizations to further the aims and objectives of the veterans and improve their way of life by assisting in Dutchess County programs, working with the Chamber of Commerce, state agencies, and the VA regional office. And now therefore be it resolved that the East Fishkill Veterans Council is hereby adopted and established as set forth on the attached mission statement. And be it further resolved that any funds obtained for the support of the council by the supervisor will be received by the town and appropriated for the sole use of the council. 
Thank you, Councilman. Do I have a motion uh, to approve the supervisor's establishment of the Veterans Council? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. That was very important. Um, number six, authorize uh, directors seasonal for the camp in Red Wing. Councilman Marinaro, could you read that? Whereas the town of East Fish conduct uh, extensive summertime programs for the youth of the town. And whereas during the summer, the town recreation department hires temporary part-time workers to assist in the various programs. Whereas the director of recreation has submitted to the town board a listing of names of the employees for the summer program and the amounts of their salary to be paid. And whereas it is the desire of the town board to authorize these employees for the summertime period as set forth in a memo from the recreation director attached here to her. Now therefore be resolved that the town controller be and nearby is authorized to place on the town payroll as temporary summer employees, the seasonal recreation camp employees and the Randwick Park employees as set forth in the annexed memo from the uh, director of recreation. Be it further resolved that the said employment should only be during the summertime employment for the amounts listed in the memo and that upon completion of the task, they shall be removed from the payroll unless further ordered by the town board. Thank you, Councilman. Do I have a uh, motion to authorize the hiring of the directors and seasonal employees? So move. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? It's that time of year. It's, uh, <laughs> we got a great bunch of men and uh, women that help us out in the camps. Um, our two uh, directors, uh, Jimmy Trail and Hannah Oppenheim, they do a great job and uh, we appreciate their help. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried, thank you. Number seven, uh, the fireworks permit, uh, Councilman Beepan. Whereas the Sons of Italy conduct their annual event to provide entertainment and fireworks to the community, and whereas the town has traditionally allowed them to use the use of the Hopewell Recreation Field for this purpose, and whereas the Sons of Italy is requesting the town board approve the use of the Hopewell Recreation Field from May 24, 2018 through May 28, 2018, and whereas the Sons of Italy is requesting the town board approve the firework display for Sunday, May 27, 2018. Therefore, be it resolved that the Sons of Italy is authorized to use the recreation field and have the fireworks display on the dates requested. And now, therefore, be it resolved that May 28, 2018 will be used for the fireworks in the event they lose a day due to inclement weather. And be it further resolved that the town police, town recreation department, and all other agencies of the town are authorized and directed to allow the use of, Hopewell recreation, of the Hopewell Recreation Field by the Sons of Italy for the firework display, and be further resolved that this consequent is subject to the receipt of a certi certificate of insurance from the Sons of Italy in indemnifying the town of any liability arising out of their use of the fields. Thank you, Councilman. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but, uh, you know, we could do a little summary of these. We don't have to read yeah. the whole entire resolution. So um, <laughs> um, that being, <laughs> that being <laughs> said, do I have a motion to authorize the fireworks permit? So moved. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say, oh, discussion? It's that time of year again. Like I said, it's uh, uh, Memorial Day weekend, the Sons of Italy, and everybody looks forward to it. Thank you. If we table this for a month, that means I can't have the garden. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Councilman, uh, Councilman Cassidy? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, opposed? <laughs> uh, approved. Thank you. <laughs> All right, number eight. Anybody want to give Disposal of Alta Police Department inventory. Okay, the police chief uh, has provided the town board with a list of the inventory which uh, he is deemed to be disposed of. Uh, there's a list attached to um, the resolution. There's a shredder and some defibrillator that no longer works. And uh, it has the model numbers uh, for the other um, uh, uh, the, the radar signal antennas and a couple other items. Um, this is standard, and we dispo dispo dispose of the inventory. Uh, do I have a motion to authorize the disposal of the outdated police department inventory? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. second. I oppose. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Motion carry. Thank you. Okay, number nine, um, refund recreation fee. Councilman Cassidy. Whereas the applicant of Hunters Ridge subdivision phase two modified the application from eight to four lot subdivision, the recreation fee that is on town is 42,000 and the applicant is requesting 18,000 only being used because of the four lots. The now therefore it be resolved that the town controller be and here is authorized to return $18,000 to the applicant. Thank you, Councilman. Do I have a motion to authorize recreation fee reimbursement <coughs> for Hunters Ridge? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carry. Thank you. Number 10, authorized settlement of Castle versus Town of East Fishgill. Um, the Town of East Fishgill uh, had a case against our police department in the Town of Kent. Uh, our insurance carriers have settled the case out of court um, and uh, we have agreed Selective Insurance was our carrier. They have settled without our Approval. The policy doesn't require you your consent, excuse me. Yeah, they're, they're, <coughs> that's right. When we enter into a agreement with our insurance carrier, they have uh, the right to uh, settle without our approval. So they have done this. Um, doesn't mean that we're happy about it, but this does then indemnify the town to any further litigation with this case. And it's my... Um, Hope that the town board will pass this so we don't have to worry about any other uh, um, future litigation in this matter. So do I have a, a motion to authorize the settlement of Castle First Town of East Fishkill? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in a discussion. I just uh, want to mention that uh, since uh, I am in touch with the police department quite a bit, uh, there was much frustration from a lot of police officers regarding the way the insurance company handled this matter. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just feel that the community needs to know that, that like the town <laughs> lawyer said, that this company went ahead and without uh, consulting with the town to see what uh, you know, the town desire was, they went ahead and, and uh, closed the case and uh, so be it, but you know. Just want to mention that for the... And we should note that it's no longer our carrier. Yes. One yes. of the reasons. Thank God. And, yes. Thank God. And number two, there's no admission of any wrongdoing or liability uh, in this settlement. Yeah, uh, to the much dismay of our uh, police chief and our town attorney, how this was handled, uh, there were many um, unanswered uh, emails and correspondence with our attorney uh, and our police department but this is where we're at and the town will not be liable for anything past this so we have a motion in a second all in favor say aye aye, aye. Um, opposed motion carried thank you <coughs> okay number 11 Authorized change of May Town Board. Uh, Councilman Marinaro, would you read that? Whereas due, conflicting, due to conflicting schedule, the supervisor is requesting to change the May 24, 2018 meeting to May 31st, 2018. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Board shall set May 31st, 2018 as its regularly scheduled meeting. Be further resolved that the Town Clerk shall duly advertise at meeting date change. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, do I have a motion to authorize the change of the May Town Board meeting schedule? So, so moved. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, discussion? Is there going to be food at the meeting? There will be food for Councilman Cassidy only. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carried. Thank you. Okay, number 12, authorized supervisor endorsed the MS4 annual report. Councilman uh, Franco. Whereas the town is mandated by the New York State DEC to enforce the MS4 rules and regulations within the town, and whereas the town's MS4 consultant will submit the town's annual report for review and acceptance by the town board, whereas the public can offer comments during the public comment part of the May 31st, 2018 meeting. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the report will be on the May 31st, 2018 agenda for acceptance, and that public comments may be made before that date by written submission or on that date as set forth above. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the supervisor is authorized to endorse and file the MS4 annual report after the public comments are received on May 31st, 2018. 
May I uh, make a suggestion that we do vote on this tonight and set the record for the acceptance of this, uh, pending, but also pending, pending the discussion the with Mr. Mr. Damaso and Walter and possibly myself, if you want to, to amend certain comments. I, I, yeah, I think that Mr. Artis uh, suggested that he can um, do a, uh, an ad addition to the report, which I will speak to him tomorrow. Um, I think that whatever comments were made tonight, we will have a meeting with uh, Mr. Artis and Mr. Damaso, but those will be in for the next year's report. So the, I will have him amend. Um, so this report is not going to be amended? No, I thought I, that that's no, what he, he wanted he could, to do. The uh, suggestion could. would be is uh, it has to be filed by the 31st, right. but he did say he'd go back and look at editing some of it. Right. So maybe the board could authorize the supervisor to sign it as edited, and then you could Correct. Be, but at least that Correct. way we can have it to DEC yeah, time. That's what I meant to say, yeah. Okay. But we can't do no, May 31st either, he said. No, May 31st. No, no, it no, it has to be filed it tonight. up there before June 1st. May 10th. Right. So we pass it pending edits. Pen the references May should be May 10th, edit. not May 31st. Yeah, but you, you, you see here your resolution here. Is this your new resolution? The city just read 31st. I have May 31st. Oh, I read the wrong resolution. Read the wrong no, resolution. No, 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 no. be an edited one, yes. That was the edited one. No, this is, they both say May 31st. You edited it wrong edited. It has to be filed by this June 1st, Okay, so we could make the, the change to say um, that 10th. the report will be on the... May 10th. May 10th. Uh, tonight, right? May 10th. May 10th, 2018 agenda. And that public comments may be made before that date. Mm -hmm. No. Yes, oh. maybe before that date by written submission or on that date set above. And the supervisor is authorized to endorse and file MS4 annual report with following uh, review and amendment as appropriate. Following review and amended. An amendment as appropriate. An amendment that is appropriate. See, clerk, we always clerk. need the lawyer to clarify things for us. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> clerk, do you, do, you, do you have that, Clerk? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so do I have a motion to authorize the supervisor to endorse the MS4 annual report as changed? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. 13. Uh, authorized town board to reject rebid. Oh, uh, this is important. Uh, Councilman uh, B. Pam, would you read this in its entirety? <laughs> well, this is kind of short. I mean, you read pretty <laughs> quick. <laughs> so, uh, whereas the town engineer previously advertised for bids with respect to the Hopewell Hamlet Water District Cannon Well Connection, general construction, and electrical construction, and whereas the town clerk received said bids and opened the same, and whereas upon a review of said bids, the town engineer is rejecting all bids at this time for cost reasons, and whereas the town engineer would like to rebid the Cannon Well Connection project in June, and now therefore be it resolved that the town clerk be and hereby is authorized to notify, notify all bidders that said bids have been rejected and to return any bid bonds or deposits previously posted to the, the respective bidders. Thank you, Councilman. Um, do I have a motion to authorize a rejection and rebidding of Hopewell Hamlet Water District? So moved. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Would the engineer give us a little detail on this? Yes, the, the, the first go around, uh, the bids came in quite a bit higher than what we had uh, estimated. Uh, upon a little closer review and, and discussion uh, with actually the, the two low bidders, uh, we deemed that we could make some changes. Uh, and given the, the scope, we felt it would be more imprudent to put it up for a rebid than just, you know, do do change orders at that, look, at that time. So we're going to combine some of the work actually into one contract now instead of two. And, and we're hoping we can realize, we think we'll realize some savings, so. Okay. Any comments, concerns? I think the thing the town for being cost conscious with these bids. One thing our engineer is, is cost conscious, that's for sure. And I appreciate it, thank you. Uh, I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
motion carried. Thank you. Number 14, set the public hearing for Hopewell West Water District. So whereas uh, the map plan and report is being prepared, and this, tonight we discuss the water routes which will affect the map plan and report. Um, next meeting, we will approve the route which we will choose and the uh, engineer will enter into his map plan and report that route. So tonight I'd like to set the public hearing and I'd like to change this resolution on the second page to say, now therefore be it ordered that the public hearing shall be conducted by the town board of the town of East Fishkill at the town hall on 330 Road 376 Hopewell Junction, Thursday, June 28th, 2018, at 7 p.m. It's not May, June, right? June, June 28th. 28th, that's right. I'm gonna make that change, addition. Okay. okay, so do I have a motion? So moved. No, for June 28th, yeah. as amended, okay. I'm gonna be here. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be here again, huh? <laughs> I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. second. All in the discussion? You have to call it up. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, number 15, authorize uh, supervisor sign agreement. Uh, Councilman Franco, could you read that? Uh, Mr. Supervisor, my wife sits on the East Fishkill Soccer Club board, and I don't think it would be appropriate for me to discuss or vote on this resolution, and I would like to recuse myself. Okay. So, Councilman Marinaro, would you read this, please? Whereas the Recreation Advisory Board has requested that the town purchase soccer equipment from the East Fishkill Soccer Club Incorporation for the amount of $1. And whereas the town board has reviewed the proposed agreement attached here, door, and whereas it is the desire of the town board to enter into an agreement with the East Fishkill Soccer Club Incorporation regarding the purchase of the soccer equipment, and now therefore be it resolved that the town supervisor be nearby is authorized to execute the attached agreement with the town, with the East Fishkill Soccer Club Inc Incorporation. Be it uh, further resolved that said property is being purchased for recreational purposes. Thank you, Councilman. Do I have a motion to authorize agreement with East Fishkill Soccer Club? So move. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Recuse. One recusal. Approved. Thank you. <coughs> Number 16. Authorized settlement and tax certiorari. Deputy Supervisor, to review, just give a summation on this uh, resolution. Whereas from time to time to time, property owners file Article 7s, proceeding challenges in their assessments, following denials from the Board of Assessment Review, following the, assess the negotiation between the town attorney and the town assessor and the tax certiorari set forth within, be not able to be resolved. The best interest of the town to resolve these are under the terms and conditions. Now, therefore, be resolved that the town attorney be and hereby is authorized to execute stipulation of settlement, settling the following matters. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, five assessments. Uh, total reduction total roughly is about $100,000. Uh, be it further resolved that the town attorney be and hereby is authorized to take all steps necessary and appropriate to effectuate the settlement of these matters. Thank you, Deputy. Um, do I have a motion to authorize the settlement of the tax certiorari? So moved. So, <coughs> second? Second. Discussion. Um, could the attorney give us a little uh, insight this, uh, onto unique these? unique situation. <coughs> this property owner owns five lots. When we went through revaluation several years ago, all five lots by the revaluation company were deemed to be in uh, approvable building lots. Um, they've been paying at that assessment. They now realize that these are undersized lots they can't be built on. So by virtue of this, they're merging the undersized lots. It will become <coughs> two lots, and the assessments are being adjusted now to appropriately reflect that there are only two building lots and not five building lots. Okay. Thank you. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. That'll do it for resolutions. We do have a budget transfer. The town comptroller did 
email the board the budget transfer and also we had a hard copy in your boxes this is over two weeks ago um, mark do you want to give a little summation on sure the transfers? it's um, four items uh, one is uh, this year we changed our protocol for the recreation guides we had been um, using a third party that would raise um, advertising revenue and then give us the uh, rec guides for free this year we sort of did it in-house so we had additional expenses but additional revenues to offset that so that's the first um, budget transfer for seventy five hundred dollars um, second one is we had planned to purchase a mower and a gator for the parks uh, department and the quotes came in a little higher than we had budgeted so we're looking for a five thousand dollar increase there um, in highway we had talked in prior workshops about the snow removal budget this uh, basically transfers money within the snow removal um, lines um, to cover the salt that we have purchased and the salt we anticipate the minimum amount of salt we anticipate purchasing in the fall and then the last one is uh, we had talked at um, workshops about uh, a truck and a paver um, used that we uh, w uh, could buy for the highway department um, one from the town of LaGrange the other from a business that is uh, liquidating its assets so that's a total of 64,000 for the two that's being funded from um, other lines within the highway department the transfer so mark uh, I <clears throat> I remember when we spoke with the uh, highway superintendent that he, he mentioned buying some trucks but I don't think a paver they don't really get rid of a paver and now we're buying a paver again well uh, I'll answer the the paver is um, not not like a paver we used to have the paver we used to have would pave full roads this is a small paver that uh, after our lengthy discussions that we had with uh, about road repairs and road uh, paving, uh, we had uh, long discussions with the town engineer and the highway superintendent. And we, uh, as we discussed with the board about that it's, uh, our budget is, tough on paving so we discussed possibly stretching that budget and how can we do that and um, together with the engineer we thought about that instead of doing full pavings of three or four roads that we can repair 20 roads so um, the engineer did suggest to look for a paver which which he did and uh, this was a used paver we did look at renting the paver and uh, it is within two years we could have bought this uh, paver for the same price of renting so um, we have already been utilizing it which uh, we are doing a lot of repairs and it's just going to stretch our budget longer to, to, to do the repairs instead of the full roads. Eventually the town board and we're going to have to discuss, uh, you know, a long-term plan for our, our roads like we, like we have been talking about. So if, if I could uh, just add the difference, yeah. I just want to different, differentiate between the two pavers. The first paver we had was a big like highway paver, big full mm -hmm. commercial highway paver. It would probably go out 20 foot wide. Okay, it was big to move, expensive to maintain, and more difficult to operate. Basically, what we got was like a driveway paver, a, a smaller machine, much easier to operate, easier to maintain, easier to transport, and we can pave as narrow as eight feet. So when we're doing millings and we're just trying to do repairs as opposed to full road paving, you know, as opposed to the attachment that we have on our skid steer, which is very limited in how much production we can get per day. This paver is like a compromise. It's small, it's maneuverable, and we can do short stretches. We can move ahead and you know jump ahead and within the same day and do do more patching. So it's not the same type of paver that we had in the past. So, uh, how much did this cost uh, the the highway? The paver is twenty four thousand. So Gee. I think that the biggest paver we sold it for probably less than that. They're less than half of what we're buying the smaller paver now. So we sold that paver, big paver for. If I remember correctly, around the ten thousand dollar mark, maybe even less than that. I think it was ten. I'd so my point is that 
We need more accountability about, about this. I understand that the highway superintendent is an elected official, with all due respect, yeah, there is equipment being bought and sold. And, you know, if, if in a piece of equipment that is warranted, uh, again, this previous paver was bought, I don't know what the intent was then, but uh, it seemed that the new highway superintendent previous to the, the gentleman that is there now thought it was useless, so we sold it. I don't know what the equipment value was, but a lot of people suggested it was sold at a lesser value than it was worth it. So now we're buying a used paver for twice as much. And I'm just, for the record, town supervisor, that we need more accountability. Well, uh, Councilman, I, I think I, I understand. I understand what's going on over here, but if you buy a car for yourself and sell it for half the price of what it's worth because you need a, a smaller car and then decide that that smaller car, you're paying more money, I, I mean. But you have <coughs> a, you have a. But you gotta understand, so let me just. I, I understand what we're doing and I, w I will agree that probably is, is the right thing to do now, but every time that we, we elect a new person for this position, it seems to f flip flop into no, how again, they wanna handle the equipment. Even though it's still a paver, it is a, a different paver when you get to the nuts and bolts of it. You take the paper that uh, highway sold a few years ago. If, if you were to put that at an auction, there might be two people interested in that machine because of what it was. You take this paper we just bought, you could have 15 people interested in that machine, okay? Because it's small, it's maneuverable, and everybody's doing driveways, everybody's doing small parking lots. Not everybody's paving roads. It's the big guys that are paving roads, and they buy new machines every few years. So. Even though it was bigger and it sold for half as much, it was just the nature of that piece of equipment that there wasn't much interest in it. Whereas a machine like this, which I think the highway super told me it's like a $125,000 paver, one owner, the gentleman just happened to pass away, it was well maintained, I think we're getting a real good deal on it, and it's a machine that anybody, I can operate it, I could teach you to operate it, believe it or not, okay, or anybody for that matter, because it's a lot simpler to operate. And I think it, it, it meets the purpose of what highway's looking to accomplish with these repairs. If we're gonna go out and pave entire roads, we're gonna sub that out to somebody with that new big machine that can do 1,000 tons a day I, or 800. I am in total this agreement with what you're saying. It's gonna do maybe 100 ton a day or I, something I, like that. Scott, I'm in total agreement with what you're saying. Okay. My point was that, again, depending on who's, at the, who's driving the boat, decides that we need a different size boat to go fishing every day. I mean, no, I don't think that's. I I I, I, I disagree respectfully because uh, things change and our budget is what it is. And we discussed how do we get more with the money we have. So, like you and the rest of the board discussed at the workshops, uh, I believe two workshops. How can we do this? So we came. I put our thinking caps on with the engineer and the highway superintendent. Our, our comptroller sat with us and we said, what are we going to do to stretch it to get the most bang for our buck to pave our roads or to fix our roads? Now, uh, most of our roads, unfortunately, is in a state of disrepair where just paving over is not going to fix it. Nick, We're getting. I, I'm sorry if I have to interrupt. I mean, I agree again with what you're saying. Okay, so then. I'm not disagreeing. So then, uh, my what are we supposed to do? One. My point was about purchasing and selling equipment. Okay, we have to we have to move forward. Business goes on. I, I, we I have understand. to purchase the equipment. I understand, but but I don't think anyone regrets selling the big paver. We we can't use it. We can't use it. So it's a dinosaur. If we had it today, we'd still we'd we'd probably turn around and sell it. Again. I'm saying I it, was to just, you know, just making ago. a point about accountability. Somebody decided that they needed that paper when they bought it. And I'm sure when they bought it, they didn't pay <clears throat> $10,000 for it. Now, whether or not we got to use that paper for whatever reasons, I don't know. Somebody else came along and said, this thing is sitting, doing nothing, let's sell it. Yeah, but my point is not that we don't need to use it, and, and you know, probably this is something that we need to use, but you know. There was a major change in philosophy yes. like 10 years ago where we stopped paving ourselves and subbed it out and that's just a legacy from okay. it, but there hasn't been changing back and forth or anything like that. It was a one time change. We're ha we're, I think we all look back and say it was a very prudent change. We can pave far more for less 
subbing it out. So, you know, I, I don't I don't think there's any regret that we changed to subcontracting out the major paving jobs. I don't think there's any regret that we sold the big paver. This is just a. I think. Well, some yeah. people made some comments that it was sold, it was undersold. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not. I'm not in the business wait, of buying and selling equipment. Sold at auction now? Well, well, I, I, I should say that we all would agree that okay. our former that our former highway superintendent was competent, right? Absolutely. I, he knew what he was doing. No, I'm not, so I'm then not I, I think we all appreciate that he agreed that we should sell the paver. It was his decision. We made a good decision for the town, and and, and we got rid of something that we wouldn't use. So. At the end of the day, we're stretching the town's dollars to do more. So I, as far as accountability, we have the comptroller helping us with the decisions, and we, we, we did a budget transfer so we could afford it. It's in the budget line, and hopefully we can get the 20, 15, 20 roads uh, paved. We already did a, a Seaman Road. If you guys will drive out there, take a look. It was a cut and fill where they cut down the areas of the road that are beyond repair, beyond just the paving, and, and I've been learning a lot about paving, where, uh, you know, I guess uh, you can't just go over and pave over it. You need to cut it and repair it correctly. So this is what they do, and, and hopefully um, uh, the town uh, highway superintendent has marked out a bunch of roads, and the, he's going to be going out with the uh, engineer to discuss which ones he believes uh, a good plan for that. So. I think that uh, it was prudent and we made the right decision. Any other comments from uh, the uh, comptroller? No. No? Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to accept the budget transfers? So moved. Um, do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, there's no additions to the agenda. Town board member comments. I'd like to make a few comments. Councilman Beepin? Sure. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the East Frisco Fire District for inviting the town board to their annual inspection of all their stations. So if you don't know, this is uh, each spring, uh, the fire department takes a month and they go through and they clean all their apparatus and then they have the commissioners come down and they do an inspection to see the quality, what needs to be replaced. Um, and it really, it's a pride thing where they really show pride in their department and they, we appreciate the members for everything that they do. Um, the supervisor and Councilman Cassidy and I had a great time at the Hillside Lake Firehouse. They made us d uh, breakfast and we'd like to, again, show our appreciation for them doing that for us as well. Uh, as a former volunteer firefighter, I just want to express to the community that, that our volunteers save the state $3 billion a year. And really what they're looking for right now is for additional volunteers. Though it is time consuming, it's very rewarding and I would urge anyone with some extra time and a willingness to serve to get involved with the department. Also, I've received a lot of comments uh, via email and phone calls uh, praising the work of the highway superintendent. So I'd like to thank Kenny Williams and his team for the great job he's been doing around town. He's been very responsive to the public. So once again, great job to the highway department. Thank you. Councilman Franco? Sure. Um, think differently day at our <coughs> day at the beach that we had last year. We're going to do it again this year. Um, it's going to be Sunday, July the 15th, rain or shine. Um, I know I, I wrote down the, um, or I said the wrong date the last meeting. Um, I want to thank um, Jan McHugh, Bill Green, and County Legislator Marge Horton. We've been going around trying to um, hit up the banks in particular uh, for donations. We are looking to put a, an accessible pavilion by the swim lanes, uh, and we think that we're going to be able to do that hopefully by the July 15th date. <coughs> um, the, uh, the county is very pleased with us for having this again. They had a great time last year and it was a very, very rewarding day. Um, as for the Veterans Committee, uh, as the supervisor said, we met last night, and I gotta tell you, the men and women that we have there are tremendous. They are so enthusiastic, and they're all workers, and that's what's gonna make this uh, Veterans Council very successful. So you'll be hearing a lot from them, and from uh, we want that outreach to continue, because like the supervisor said, there are so many benefits that veterans are not aware of that they have. And we're gonna do what we can and act as a conduit for, uh, for the veterans that we have here in East Fishkill and get them to the right people to talk to up in the county. So I wanna thank everybody from the county also for coming down last night. That was very great. So. 
right here. Councilman Marinaro. I, um, before I make my comment, uh, I understand the councilman said that we were invited from the fire department to do the to go to the inspection. Yeah, yeah. That, that day you came in, I called the fire district, and I don't <laughs> like to throw anyone under the bus, but they forgot, and that they sent out the email right away. Then it would have been that nice day. if uh, the rest. I wasn't notified. We're they sent the, the they sent the email right, that but day. You went. I we the rest of the board. If we were invited, uh, I, I, was, I received I an email. email. Five o'clock that night. Yeah, yeah. that day yeah. I sent. The, they sent it out like five o'clock. The the fire the fire uh, district sent it to us. To our new email, you which I never got. What do you mean? I never got your new email. I never got the email. There is a glitch with the email right. when they said I'm out. having the same problem with mine. Okay. It's not coming yeah. to my phone. But the bottom line is that I asked w whether or not, so, because in the past yeah. they were inviting us. Yeah, and that's why I called. And now that you guys are making a statement, it's a little shocking and, you know, just off the record. That so, food. Dead food. Uh, well, that's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm invited to everything else, but not the food part. <laughs> Uh, all right, so this is the liaison uh, report. This was uh, actually combined the last month and this month. Uh, the police department has been busy uh, the last month uh, working on some investigation involving some scams going on online. Residents uh, should be very wary of any deal involving payments for expensive items uh, that the seller is offering to ship to the community. This could be cars, boats, pets, even horses. Do your research and avoid being a scam victim. In another case, a resident who was uh, conned for uh, nearly $5,000 in a credit card rating scam where false checks were exchanged for gift cards uh, back to a scammer, scanner. Uh, never accept a deal that involves money cards or gift cards as part of the transaction. These are uh, usable scams. The police department is also preparing for June arrival of a new canine. Uh, they have uh, uh, the PBA and the town supervisor with the town board as a program on the way. Uh, the the, the canine, we're trying to save taxpayers dollars and we do whatever we can to have the costs uh, either being donated even the training, I think, was uh, uh, not paid for, but actually donated. So the PBA is holding a fundraising via Facebook to help raise the needed money to cover for additional costs. And it's a, the, the actual dog is a male dog. It's a Belgian, Nick helped me with this, Melamar. Mel no, I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> it's a beautiful dog, dog. It's very, from what I understand. <laughs> it's a very smart dog, very obedient. Uh, they get to live a long time, uh, and this fundraising is to raise money to have a name for the dog. So the East Fishkill PBA hosted a senior's uh, citizen uh, uh, breakfast at the East Fishkill Community Center on May 8th. The event was well attended, and officers discussed several scams being perpetrated against seniors, and the safety uh, talk about how seniors can better protect themselves. The town of East Fishkill Police Department has received a couple of reports of bear sightings in the areas of Rainbow Crest in Wikipedia and in the other area of Long Hill Road. Residents are word, uh, warned of not approaching any bear or to contact, and they should contact the police department should they see one. Um, also, uh, talking about the fire department, um, a couple of Saturdays ago, on April 28, <coughs> local fire departments were, were doing uh, a recruiting volunteer. So I stopped by a couple of fire departments. And uh, for one, I stopped, up, stopped by the um, station one. I had a great conversation with Frank LaCalamita, who is the assistant chief, first assistant chief. We had a nice exchange of information on how the town official and the fire department could work in synchrony to serve the town needs. I have to say that we are very lucky to have a great group of volunteers in our local fire department who respond to all type of emergencies 24-7. Being a volunteer fire department also saved many taxpayer dollars. Thank you for addressing that for our community. 
And on behalf of myself and the whole entire community, I want to thank all members of the East Fishkill <coughs> Fire Department for the time and efforts that they put in to save, to serve our town. Thank you all. That's my report. Thank you, Councilman. Um, Deputy <coughs> Supervisor. Uh, the highways, they're out doing the blacktop repair every day and the lawn and the curb and stuff, everything they get damaged from the winter since it's finally over. Uh, the jet factor is working on catch basins and the sweepers are out sweeping the roads. And before Nick brings it up, just like to thank not only all the fire, the police and the emergency, but all the, for Memorial Day this year, remember that this month. Yeah, and we are, um, all the flags and the uh, hometown hero banners will be going out soon, so keep out a look for them. Uh, just the comments, uh, this Saturday, May 12th, from 1 to 4, the Historical Society at the Brinkerhoff Historical Site will be having their, um, uh, uh, an event where they'll have, uh, it's called a farm day, and they'll have animals and demonstrations, and they'll have antique farm equipment, uh, they'll have hay rides and um, games and crafts. It's, it's really nice. They have a great facility there. It's one to four at the uh, Brinkerhoff historic site. Um, also, uh, on May 28th is Memorial Day. We do have a Memorial Day ceremony, and that will be at our Veterans Memorial down uh, Route 82. It starts at 11 a.m. We do start with a parade from the community center down to the, uh, to the War Memorial. Um, also, I need a board member, I forgot to ask, I need a board member to volunteer to do interviews for consulting engineers for the Carroll Drive Bridge Project. So if you could please let me know if somebody's available, I need to do interviews for them. Um, thank you also to the PD for having the senior breakfast uh, this past Wednesday. It was a great event. A lot of seniors went. It was really nice. I didn't get any pancakes. No so food? Just to let you know, I didn't, I didn't get, get any. Right that food. <laughs> no, they didn't want you there. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, and thank you to <laughs> thank you to all the residents and. Um, people who send me emails and, and call me with your comments. I appreciate them all. Uh, please, please keep them coming. Uh, I, I'm here to uh, help in any way I can. Of course, you, you can reach me in my office, 221-4303, with any information you need. I will get it for you. Um, and thank you to all our uh, our responders, like our council, like the board said, to our uh, first responders, our police officers, firefighters, emergency EMS. Thank you, thank you all, and have a safe uh, weekend. And uh, with that, do I have a motion to adjourn? Thank, one quick thing, oh, yeah, real no, quick, I ahead. promise. Yeah. I just need to wish a very happy 13th birthday to my darling little angel, Jenna. Oh, oh. Happy birthday, Jenna. Yeah, Jenna. <laughs> okay, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much.